Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling 855-777-9660. That's 855-777-9660. Or email Steve at malzbergshow at newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. It seems that President Obama's paid political offers out in force today. And you know why? And you know why? Because the men and women in this room scare the living daylights out of them. I'm actually glad that the president's whole political staff is here instead of actually doing mischief in the country. All right, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Senator Ted Cruz at the uh, Value Voters Summit speaking earlier today, and he was heckled, and uh, that's what led him to say that the president's uh, team is out in force today. Welcome to the Steve Malsberg Show. It is Friday. I can't believe, I, I cannot believe it's Friday. We are on this circle, this vicious, you know, not vicious circle, but this merry-go-round where it's Monday, it's Friday, it's Monday, it's Friday, and I guess that's a good thing. Uh, but anyway, that aside, um, we have a lot to get to. And in this segment, I want to I talk about something that has been infuriating me. First of all, first of all, the polls, okay? You've heard about this Wall Street Journal, um, the, the New NBC News Wall Street Journal poll that, that went off like a sonic atomic bomb for the Republicans. Oh, it, it, it's what's responsible for the Republicans off making their offer yesterday. Oh, they see that they are in big trouble. The party is just falling apart. Don Lemon had a, had a congressman, I forget who he was speaking to before, uh, or not even a congressman. Oh, Larry, uh, Larry Elder, uh, radio talk show host on. And, and, and Don Lemon of CNN says, I'm, I'm an independent, so I don't really, you know, have an ax to grind here. But, you know, you're destroying your party, man. You need, your identity, your brand is destroyed. These people are lunatics. They are nuts. We need advice. Republicans need advice from Don Lemon and Dana Bash and SNBC on how to, how to, how to run the Republican Party. Are you kidding? Talk about the inmates running the asylum. Now, we have heard over and over and over and over and over and over again that Ted Cruz is the most hated man in America. He, they, he's despised. He screwed the Republicans. He screwed the American people. He's responsible for this shutdown. He's bad, 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 bad. Okay, so in this NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, which is supposedly horrific news for Republicans, and I'll get to that, and I'll tell you something that no one else has told you up till this point. I tweeted it out last night, and I'm telling you, no one else has sh told and showed you what I'm about to tell you and show you in a minute. But let's focus on Ted Cruz for a second, okay? I have the results of this question here. What they did was, in this poll, Barack Obama, the Democratic Party, Ted Cruz, Harry Reid, John Boehner, Tea Party mu Movement, Republican Party. And they asked, they put total positive because they have strongly positive, you know, slightly positive, strongly negative, slightly negative. But total positive, total negative. Listen to this. The most hated man in America, Ted Cruz, has a 14% approval rating and a 28% disapproval rating. 28%. 28% disapproval rating. Barack Obama's disapproval rating, 41%. Harry Reid's disapproval rating, 32%. Yet Ted Cruz, with a disapproval rating of 28%, is the most hated man in America. Um, as Ricky Ricardo might say to the mainstream media, start explaining. Because I don't get it. Unless you're a bunch of liars... Seems to me that if your disapproval rating is 28%, uh, that's a lot better than 41, which is what Obama has, or 32, which is what Harry Reid has. 
And it would make those two and put Obama and Reid in competition for the most hated man in America. 28% disapproval is not so bad. And that's what this poll that's devastating for Republicans shows that Ted Cruz has. So enough with the baloney from the media. It is making my head explode. Number one. Number two. Oh, the Republicans are to blame. Oh, most people blame the Republicans. Oh, my God. Oh my. Now, there are other questions that were asked in this poll that, yes, are not great for Republicans. I'll admit that. But the one that they kept talking about and the one CNN kept showing throughout the day yesterday once this was released and all night, like every 30 seconds, touted the fact that the American people, 53% of the American people blame the Republicans. And this is what they put on the screen. And I, but I don't get this from CNN. I copied this from page 12 of the actual NBC News Wall Street Journal poll. Take a look at this. Take a look at this graphic. Uh, well, I'll tell you what it says while we put it up. This is the, uh, the, that 42. Okay. What it says is, what it says is, The people were asked, as you know, President Obama and the Republicans in Congress have not reached a budget agreement. And this has led to a shutdown of the federal government. Who do you think is more to blame for this shutdown? President Obama or the Republicans in Congress? Folks, and the choices are President Obama, Republicans in Congress, both equal or not sure. Is something missing from that choice? Let me repeat the choices. The Republicans in Congress, President Obama, both equal or not sure. Uh, How about, uh, it's funny, one of my good friends who, if I said his name, you would know who he is, wrote back, uh, who did he write? How about, uh, it's funny, one of my good friends who, if I said his name, you would know who he is, wrote back, uh, who did he write? They left off the the list of who to blame, and I wrote back to him. I, I was thinking more along George W. Bush, which was an answer to his joke. I forget who he said. I'll find it in a minute, but... They didn't let you choose Democrats in Congress. There's no choice. You can't, you can't do it. If you blame the Democrats in Congress, you couldn't vote. It's not there. What kind of poll is that? What kind of question is that? And all I heard on CNN every six seconds was, oh, look at this poll. Look, and they put up those four choices. And I said, wait a minute. Something's wrong here. And indeed, something's wrong here. And this poll is with, eight, I think it has 850 people in this poll. 20% of them are either government workers or have a family member that's a government worker. 20% of them are either government workers or have a family member that's a government worker. So give me a break. But how do you ask a question, who's more to blame? The Republicans and Congress. So give me a break, but how do you ask a question, who's more to blame? The Republicans and Congress. And that's what makes it such a nice poll for CNN and the rest of the media. An earthquake, they called this poll. And that's what makes it such a nice poll for CNN and the rest of the media. An earthquake, they called this poll. The Democrats in Congress. Insanity. Insanity. And you want to hear really insanity? I got to play you this. Tina Brown, Tina Brown uh, was interviewing John McCain for the Daily Beast's annual Hero Summit yesterday. Tina Brown, the editor-in-chief. And listen to what she asked. This is going to be 24, Will. Listen to what she asked John McCain. Unfortunately, we are driven to some degree by... I'll be very frank with you, some incumbent Republicans fear of a Tea Party primary. Well, I know we see that, but I mean, isn't really the big question now? I mean, the story of this political crisis is really, you know, the culpability not just of the Republican crazies, but of the Republican non-crazies. I mean, how do we get to the point that Donald is Rand Paul's bitch? I hate to use that word, but I mean, it's like, where's the heroism in your own party? I mean, why aren't the moderate Republicans, you know, fighting back? We're always saying, why don't the, you know, the, the, the moderate Muslims fight jihad? But, you know, this is jihad. Look, it's... All right, it's- again, this is jihad. Jihad, first of all, but... So first of all, uh, uh, Mitch McConnell is Ted Cruz's B.I. itch. 
which is disgraceful. Secondly, we always say, why don't the moderate Republicans uh, and Muslims fight back with jihad? This is jihad. Really? We're blowing people up, huh? These people are sick. Sick! And then they tout these phony polls. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Steve Malsberg Show, Max TV, and radio. The Steve Malsberg Show. Attention seniors and baby boomers. A new website has been created just for you. SocialSecurity311.com. At SocialSecurity311.com, we reveal a weird trick that could help you add $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. For example, did you know how you file for Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect? One simple step could add up to $1,000 to your monthly payouts. And other loopholes we found reveal 33 ways for big savings on your health care at social security 311.com you will also discover how you could save up to 50 percent on your groceries along with 49 other ways to save as much as fifty thousand dollars starting today newsmax says this website is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50 so go to social security 311.com now to find out how you could add extra money to your social security checks that's social security 311.com social security 311.com in 2013, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you are robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTbook.com. That's AFTbook.com. What is Lignet? Lignet is knowledge. Lignet is power. Lignet is global. Top level officials, U.S. intelligence officers, national security advisors, foreign operatives, all reporting directly to you. What is Lignet? Lignet is confidential. Lignet is sensitive. Lignet is security. What is Lignet? They're the ones taking the world's pulse. If you're not in the know, you're not on Lignet.com. You've been briefed. I used to sleep like a baby. Now I have to get up in the middle of the night just to go to the bathroom. And not just once. Men, if you suffer from frequent urine... Listen to this. Renowned physician Dr. David Brownstein believes this does not need to be an inevitable part of aging. After extensive research, Dr. Brownstein has recently developed Prostate Revive, the dietary supplement specifically formulated to help improve and sustain normal prostate function. And now you can receive a 30-day supply of Prostate Revive. Just cover a $4.95 shipping fee. For complete details, visit prostaterevive.com offer. Act now, and you'll also be given instant access to our downloadable special report, A Doctor's Guide to a Healthy Prostate. Learn how you can try Prostate Revive for 30 days at prostaterevive.com slash offer. Hurry, limited time offer. That's prostaterevive.com slash offer. Hi, this is Dick Morris. Obamacare is taking full effect this year with over 15,000 pages of regulations. You need to know how this law affects you. That's why you should get your copy of Obamacare's Survival Guide. It's easy to read and the best guide to the new law. Even if you're currently insured or a senior on Medicare or a business owner, a medical profession, or really any citizen, you need the Obamacare Survival Guide. In it, you'll find about hidden taxes, fees, and fines, including a 40% tax on some health plans. I warned you about Obamacare. It's rationing Medicare cuts and will trigger doctor shortages. Now the Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the simple steps to protect your family. Get the Obamacare Survival Guide at bookstores everywhere. It's already an Amazon bestseller. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 today. Go to Obamacare311.com. Obamacare311.com. That's Obamacare311.com. Can you find the Steve Malzberg Show? Everywhere. From your smartphone to satellite radio to Newsmax Live TV to Roku, we have you covered. Here is Steve Malzberg. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, take a, a, a little break, a short break away from uh, the news of the day. By the way, um, still no agreement, obviously. Uh, the uh, Republicans met at the White House yesterday with uh, the president. I think there were 17 uh, uh, members of the House uh, at that meeting. Um, when I was driving home yesterday, it came over on CNN and it came over on, uh, on uh, the New York Times that uh, the president rejected the overture made by John Boehner and the Republicans uh, to, uh, to uh, fund the government, or should I say raise the debt ceiling for another uh, six weeks and negotiate other issues, keeping the government closed. Uh, but the comments made afterwards, at least by the Republicans at the meeting, Eric Cantor and others, said that, uh, you know, the, the, the president listened, didn't say yes or no, and uh, they're meeting again today. So that, that's where we are, although I wouldn't hold my breath. All right, uh, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is um, Stephen Casey, Chief Counsel for the Texas Center for Defense of Life. And um, this is a bizarre case, and you might have seen um, uh, Bill O'Reilly talk about it uh, yesterday. Um, they're, they're, his group is suing a Texas judge who ordered a 15-year-old girl to uh, keep living with her grandmother, even though she claimed the woman's convicted sex offender boyfriend was making aggressive advances towards her and... The couple was trying to convince this 15-year-old girl to terminate her pregnancy. So joining us now is Stephen Casey. Hey, Stephen, how are you? I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks for, for um, bringing us on the show. Well, I think this is a very interesting case and a very important case. So, so I mean, I, I, I had the basics correct, right? Yeah, you do have the basics correct. The, uh, it gets a little bit more, I would say, crazy or outrageous when you, you take into consideration that the grandmother was a former uh, it was non-biologically related grandmother. She was actually her ex-step-grandmother. Her natural grandfather and this woman had since divorced, and so there was no reason for her to stay in this house whatsoever. And, and the judge failed in his first duty, which was to protect her. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why he would send her back. And then six months after this ruling that sent her back, uh, the sex offender— um, the the, boy, the the grandmother's boyfriend shot and killed the grandmother and wound up sexually assaulting your client. Oh yes, it, it was it was crazy, and you know there was a last line of defense, and there were war- It's not like there weren't warning flags, right? Because in in the, in the fall of 2011, this girl had gone to three school teachers who were also included in this lawsuit: her, her English teacher, the vice principal, and principal of her school, and she had said. Uh, she had an assignment to write a story about something, the, the best thing that had ever happened to her or the worst thing that had ever happened to her. And she approached the teacher and said, can I write about something that's happening right now? And the teacher said, just change the names, and yes, you can. And so the girl wrote a story of being sexually assaulted. It was very clear to the teachers that it was going on, and they didn't report it to the authorities. And as a matter of fact, to add insult to injury, they made her, her, they told the story, unbeknownst to her, to her grandmother and the sex offender, and she was made to go back and apologize to the school teachers for making up such a lie. I mean, it just, it, it boggles your mind. And so then we go to court. So that was the first line of defense that fell. The school teachers could, could have reported the sexual assault. And then she goes and she has a private conversation with the judge for 20 to 30 minutes and telling him, look, oh, there's all this pressure out in the courtroom. I really do want to go and live with my biological mom, but they're pressuring me to have this abortion, and I'm being propositioned and asked to strip my clothes off by the sex offender regularly, and the judge still did nothing and failed. Right, well, well, why, yeah, okay, so why did this judge um, decide not to send back, or what was his stated reason, if there was one, not to grant custody or not to let the girl go back to her biological mother? You you represented the mother. The mother wanted the daughter. The daughter wanted to go. Why on earth would they, they the judge decide to leave her in this, uh, you know, precarious situation is putting it mildly? Well, two things. The first answer for the first part of your question is he said, I find no reason to remove her out of this home, which to me – was the most shocking thing. We found out later, we didn't even know the substance of her conversation with the judge at that time. We didn't find it out till six months after she had been assaulted and had some time to recover, and we talked to her. There's some other uh, evidence out there not yet confirmed that he may have been friends with these people. The, ju- the judge might have been friends with the grandmother and the sex offender. 
yeah, with, with the sex offender and the biological grandfather. Yeah. Oh, and okay. we're, we're finding some and more information about that out. And, you know, once that's conclusively identified, it goes even further to show that he was just, I mean, even in the conversation, the girl says, and when she described her conversation with the judge, he keeps asking her, are you sure? Are you sure? And I just think, you know, let's, let's assume for, you know, for the sake of argument, we don't know anything about the conversation she had with the judge. There's no one in their right mind that would put a girl back in the home with a registered sex offender who was registered for having done prison time because he was he, he was commit, convicted of indecency with a 13 year old. It, it is it is unbelievable and outrageous. All right, Stephen, we have a minute left. Tell me uh, what where is she now and what are you what are you uh, suing for? Well, she's safe right now, undisclosed location because we want to keep her her identity protected. But right now we're suing for damages. This girl needs to have no worries for the rest of her life because she has been through a nightmare. And these people who dropped the ball, they had a special relationship with her. And tort law is based on that. If, I, I, if you have a duty to protect me, then, then, then when you drop on that duty and you breach that duty, you owe me. So you're, 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 suing, this, you're suing this judge in the state, correct? And we're suing the judge, and we're suing the um, the three school officials. Okay, and uh, and and she, when you say she's in an undisclosed location, I mean, who's is she with her mother? I mean, is she who she she's with? She's with family. Family, she's okay. With family okay. right okay. now. Okay, she's good. With family, biologically related family, who's who are out there to look out for her best interests because the judge and these three. And is that official custody? I mean, does someone have official custody of her yet? Yep. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. Good. Yeah, All right. Do. Listen, Stephen. Good luck with this, and let us know what happened. Okay. All right, Steve. Thanks for taking me your show. I appreciate my, it. My pleasure. Stephen Casey, Chief Counsel for the Texas Center for Defense of Life. This is uh, uh, this uh, for a judge to do what he did is is, in my opinion, just outrageously nuts. And let's hope these people win their lawsuit. We're coming back, Doctor Samadi, Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio. The Steve Malzberg Show. Are you worried about not having enough money to retire? Finally, there's a retirement solution designed to address the damage that the government spending policies and the Federal Reserve have inflicted on the value of the dollar. Introducing the Heritage Advantage IRA, the new gold and silver-backed retirement account from Heritage. Heritage Gold Group. Don't let the declining value of the dollar put your retirement in jeopardy. Heritage Advantage IRA puts retirement savers back in control with physical gold and silver combined with the tax advantages of an IRA. Call 855-GOLD-IRA to request your free no-obligation Heritage Advantage IRA kit. Kit. Inside, you'll find information about how to buy physical gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. No additional investment required. Call 855-GOLD-IRA for your free Advantage IRA kit. Don't wait. Plans for new regulations may eliminate rules allowing you to buy gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. Call 855-GOLD-IRA. That's 855-465-3472. When you were younger, you probably never considered your heart health. But cardiologist Dr. Chauncey Crandall knows from experience that taking steps to care for your heart becomes more crucial as the decades pass, if you want to keep this vital organ ticking smoothly for years to come. That's why Dr. Crandall recently developed Cardio Advanced, a nutritional supplement containing 12 special ingredients, all selected to help improve and maintain your heart health and normal cholesterol levels. The flagship of this exclusive formula, Esterify Plant Sterols, may help lower your risk of heart disease when taken as part of a diet low in cholesterol and fat. And great news. Now, you have the opportunity to try a 30-day supply of Cardio Advanced. Simply cover a $4.95 shipping and handling charge. Plus, if you act right now, you'll also receive a free doctor's guide to a healthy heart as a special bonus. Please visit CardioAdvanced.com slash radio for complete details on claiming your 30-day bottle of Cardio Advanced and free report. That's CardioAdvanced.com slash radio. Life is too precious to ignore your heart health. Visit CardioAdvanced.com slash radio now while supplies last. Have you hit a brick wall with your weight loss? Does your weight management plan need an extra edge for success? If so, listen up. Metabio is the revolutionary weight loss breakthrough designed to help you reach your goal weight. As part of your diet and exercise program, Metabio is the premium nutritional supplement power packed with five high quality ingredients. When used as part of a healthy lifestyle, each component is formulated to help you reach your goals and maintain your optimal weight and wellness. It supports healthy metabolism and promotes fat loss. Now, learn how you can try a 30-day supply of Metabio 
Just cover a $4.95 shipping fee. Visit themetabio.com slash special. Act now and also receive instant access to our downloadable special report, a practical guide to healthy weight management. Try it now at themetabio.com slash special. That's the M-E-T-A-B-I-O dot com slash special. While supplies last, themetabio.com slash special. Attention hip implant patients. Are you in constant pain? Have you received a letter from your doctor about your implant? Have you had or need a revision surgery? Do you have high levels of metal, chromium, or cobalt in your blood? Over 90,000 hip implant devices have been recalled due to defects and failures resulting in revision or replacement surgery. If you have a recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920 to see if your implant is affected by the recalls. If you or a loved one has a defective or recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920. That's 800 460 Protect your legal rights today. Call 800-460-0920. This is an advertisement, not valid in all states. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. iLawsuit.com is an advertising group that represents lawyers advertising their services and is a free matching service for consumers. It is not a law firm or lawyer referral service. This is not your typical Scream Fest talk show. No. 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 This is the next generation of... Malsberg. All right, folks, welcome back to the uh, Friday edition of the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, feel free to weigh in, please, at uh, 855-777-9660, 855 uh, 9660. We're hoping to hook up with uh, Dr. David Samadi, our friend. We speak to him every week at this time, Chairman of Urology and Chief of Robotic Surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital right here in New York City. Also the host of uh, uh, House Calls on uh, the Fox News Channel uh, on the weekend as you uh, watch him every weekend, I'm sure. A uh, couple of stories out there today. Uh, one is of great interest, uh, well, uh, to everybody. Should they both? On a team of British scientists releasing a major study that could represent a breakthrough in the treatment of uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease, for one, and maybe even Parkinson's uh, disease. Uh, this study published uh, Wednesday, I guess, in the Journal of Science, Translational Medicine. The team said that it had halted brain cell death in mice by using a drug-like compound that was injected into the animal's stomachs through a mouth tube. Uh, it was a uh, neurodegenerative, uh, th- this induced a neurodegenerative disease caused by abnormal uh, prion proteins, blah, 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 blah. The nearest model of human disorders that can be found in uh, animals uh, before treating one group with that compound. So according to the study, the mice who were treated remained free of symptoms like, of, uh, uh, like memory loss, impaired reflexes, limb dragging. Five weeks later, the mice uh, also lived longer than uh, the un treated mice so this this uh is a is a could be a major study of course you know i i, I want to ask dr somebody if we get him how long it takes to go from the mice stage of a of a study and uh and discovery to actual trials on humans i mean is it a matter of of months is it a matter of years decades i don't know that's why we hope to speak to dr somebody also uh the flu shot the flu shot, the flu shot. And the, the question here, is it ever too early to get the flu shot? And um, I got to tell you now, you know, you might laugh at me. I, I, I don't have the flu. Whatever the heck I got, I do not have the flu, all right? Um, and it's lingered for four weeks now. Uh, but I, I don't get a flu shot. I, I've, I don't think, I mean, in my adult life that I could recall, I've never gotten a flu shot. Certainly not in the last 15 years or so. Um, and I... I don't know. One of the reasons uh, I was always under the impression seems like I always heard from somebody, oh, I got the flu shot and I got sick. That's number one. Number two, you get the flu shot and you get the flu anyway later. And then they say, well, it didn't cover the strain that you have. You got the flu and you got the flu shot, but the flu shot was for a different strain. So that's always bothered me and troubled me. And then um, the third one, um, <laughs> I know, you know, lots of medical professionals and lots of doctors, and the doctors will all say, get your flu shot. What's wrong with you? And 
two offices of doctors that I w trust, and in one case trusted, unfortunately he, he was killed tragically in a fire. Um, the doctor would tell me, get the, get the shot, get the shot. And then the nurse and or the wife of the doctor who worked in the office in two cases, two separate offices, would say to me, I don't take it. I don't get it. I don't take it. I don't get it. So, you know, I, 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 so I don't get it. And I don't know if that's good or if that's bad or if that's ugly. I don't know. And then I, there's a column on foxnews.com. Um, do vitamin C and vitamin D prevent the flu? And the answer is no. And I do take plenty of vitamin C and vitamin D3 and, you know, all the supplements you could imagine. Uh, which, again, you're laughing at me because of this thing that I have. Might, I think I have a virus. It must be a virus of some kind because uh, the antibiotics did not make it go away. So we'll see. I think it's getting a little better, notwithstanding that my voice is still crummy. Um, and some of you might say, so what else is new? Your voice is always crummy. Okay, touche to you. 855-777-9660. Uh, Do you get flu shots? Are you afraid of flu shots? Have you gotten flu shots and they've worked? Have you gotten flu shots and they don't work? And here's an important one, which I will not comment on. Do you get your child vaccinated with the flu vaccine? That's a question as well. That's, if you want to weigh in, I would love to hear from you. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's as you get older, you start thinking about the flu vaccine more and more and more. But I, I don't have any plans to take it. Plans do change. That's why they're, that's why they're plans. Now, speaking of Obamacare, okay, speaking of Obamacare, there was, a, okay, Dr. Samadhi is in with the patient. So we will uh, probably take a rain check for, uh, for next week with Dr. Samadhi where we will uh, save, we will bank these two stories, as they say. Uh, and uh, hopefully we will, um, we will have uh, his expert opinion. In the meantime, you know, go get a flu shot if you want one. Don't, don't listen to me. But by the way, I don't give medical advice. I talk about experience and have doctors like Dr. Samadhi on to talk about, you know, he could give you advice, but I don't give medical advice. Don't not get a flu shot because I don't get a flu shot. You know, you do what you want to do. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Uh, what I do and what I don't do. All right. I, I, I have in my hand a picture of a room that is empty, full of chairs, empty except for two. Count up. I'll do it the way the baseball players do. I'll hold up the forefinger and the pinky so that you can't get confused. That's why they don't hold up the middle finger and the forefinger because from a distance when a catcher or the players hold up how many outs there are, you know, if you hold up those two fingers close together, it could look like one. So you go... You know, pinky and forefinger. Anyway, two people in attendance at an Obamacare and you event. This was really an Obamacare and you event because there were two yous there. Um, see where this was. Greenville, South Carolina. Let's discuss what this Affordable Care Act meant for you and your community. This session will help you understand the benefits and will equip you to spread the word, the gospel, about the benefits of Obamacare in your community. Come out and get the facts. Two people, in addition to the organizers, two people, in addition to the organizers. They say, I think the last number I saw, they say maybe 40,000 people have signed up for Obamacare. Maybe, maybe. I think that's the number I heard. It could be less, but let's say it was 40,000. 40,000? They need millions. And they need millions of young, healthy adults to sign up so they could pay in and make the whole rest of the thing work. Folks, this is just a disaster. People still can't get online. Still can't get in to sign up or onto the computer, you know, the website, whatever. And these same people who maybe have tried once, twice, three times and have given up. If they don't sign up by X, X, amount of, X date next year, they could be fined. Well, they've been trying to sign up. That's why one of the reasons why the Republican proposal, demand proposal to 
delay the individual mandate for another year like Obama delayed the uh, business mandate and gave so many exemptions to so many of his buddies makes all the sense in the world. I'm hearing, I'm hearing that they're okay with the fact that these glitches, glitches, just like Apple. Can you imagine if Apple put out a product and where are we? Ten days later, you couldn't get on the product? Pfft. Yeah, just like Apple Obama told us last week. Um, I'm hearing that they're, they're okay with this going through November. They won't consider it a failure if this lasts through November and then things get better. Through November? How incompetent are these people? How incompetent are these people? And by the way, what a surprise because I thought it was going to run so smooth. Yeah, right. All right, let's get to the phones. 855-777-9660. We go to Vero Beach, Florida, where I don't I don't know if you need a flu shot down, down south where the weather's warm. Um, I, I could be wrong. Shola is on the line. Hey, Shola, welcome. Hi. You always say I'm from Vero Beach. It's Boynton Beach. Well, they write Vero Beach on my screen. Right. What's wrong with you guys in there? Come on. That's bang. Right. Your, I, I, I will. I want you to bang some heads in there. Straighten these people out. I'm sorry. I was going to say, how are you listening to me in Vero <laughs> Beach? Is it on Newsmax? Is it on XM? No. And so you're listening in on WFTL. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Yep, yep. I always get a flu shot. You do? Even in Florida? Yep. I, I moved to Florida from New Jersey, and I always got a flu shot in New Jersey. My daughter was born in October in New Jersey. And I, she got a flu shot. She's always gotten a flu shot, with the exception of one year down here. She just, um, But every year we get the flu shot. I work with um, – I'm a preschool teacher, oh, okay, and I work okay. with a lot of little, little ones. Right. So well, what, let, let me ask you a question. Is the, fr- oh. is the flu as prevalent – down in Florida, for instance, where it's warm year-round, as it is in uh, New York and New Jersey. I think I think the, it's more. It is here, yes, because you have such an like an, an older community, you know, older people living down here. Older population, um, yeah. Yes, and also because of me working within with. Sure, children, yeah. If you work yeah? with kids, it's a, yeah. I can um, understand. And once one get it, it just runs around real fast. So as the caregivers of our you know, the teachers of these kids, we have to, like, we have to be there regardless. So gotcha. This one shot works great for me. Well, uh, I appreciate your call, and I promise you I will never <laughs> say Vero Beach for you again. That's all right. All right, okay. you have a good good weekend. You appreciate too. it. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, folks, so we have uh, some other lines way uh, ringing in. Should I go to Don? Let's go to Don right here in, well, I don't know. It says New York, but it says Fort Morgan, Colorado. Where are you, Don? I'm in Nanuet, New York, Steve. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. I don't know why it says. Is your phone? Are you calling from a phone that you got in Fort Morgan, Colorado? <laughs> I don't. No, all right, no, then no. I don't get that at all. But okay, go ahead. What can I, I'm glad you called. What can I do for you? Well, uh, on on the flu shot, I don't get a flu shot either. A lot for the same reasons you you don't get one. Uh, but my main reason for calling is when you played the Tina Brown. Uh, tape before why didn't John McCain straighten her out well if I oh you you are so right you are so right because when I heard that last night when I was cutting that sound bite up and 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 Tina Brown and on a stage in front of a a lot of people uh, it was disrespectful to John McCain and 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 said that vulgarity about uh, 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 Mitch McConnell being Ted Cruz's B.I. itch Um, And then comparing Republicans to jihadists, if I was John McCain, I swear, either I would have said, what the heck are you talking about? Do you know what you just said? Do you realize what jihadists are? Do you know what jihadists did to this country? How dare you? Or I would have taken the microphone off and walked out. But John McCain, hey, I I don't even, to be honest with you, believe me, if he had done that, we would have heard about it. But I don't know what he said. He probably giggled. He did giggle. He did, he did giggle. He, okay, good. See, yeah, he did. He, he was laughing, and and the other day, a, a, a representative from Wisconsin straightened out Andrea Mitchell. Oh yes. About yeah, and I'm, I'm sure you played that. Well, you know what? It's it. funny you mention that. We did not play it, but when we come back from the break, I will play that. We had we do have a cut nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen, which I think people do need to hear. That's a good point. 
<laughs> Good point. Okay, Steve. You, and if you want to be a co-producer, you call me back and let me know. <laughs> All right. God bless, Steve. Take care. You take care. Appreciate the call. Bye. All right. Um, we're going to continue, folks. When we come back, we have a couple of other callers as well. Um, 855-777-9660. I guess the flu, baby, is a hot issue. Um, right here on the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV, and radio. The Steve Malsberg Show. In 2013, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, and you may be forced to watch helplessly as you are robbed of 90% of your life savings, all while your home's value is eradicated. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer believes we will soon stare down a secret crisis that will rival the Great Depression. It was Wiedemer's 2005 book, America's Bubble Economy, that warned of coming meltdowns in our housing and stock markets. Washington did not heed his call, and folks on Main Street lost $50 trillion from the recession. His New York Times best-selling book, Aftershock, predicted our federal debt and dollar would be the next bubbles to burst. And now, Robert Wiedemer has released a startling video with shocking evidence the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Join us at AFTBook.com. That's AFTBook.com. Hi, this is Mike Reagan. You need to watch out because thousands of new Obamacare rules are currently being implemented and few know what the law says or does. Listen to what Senator Max Baucus, one of the authors of the Obamacare law, recently said. I tell you, I just see a huge train wreck coming down in the, and I don't see any results yet. I just see a huge train wreck. He's right. So protect yourself from this train wreck. Get the number one bestseller, The Obamacare Survival Guide. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. Join more than a half a million Americans who have their copy. Get the number one bestseller, The Obamacare Survival Guide, at bookstores everywhere. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 off the cover price by going now to Obamacare311.com. Obamacare311.com. That's Obamacare311.com. Do you have a motorized wheelchair or scooter that needs repairs and you don't know where to turn? Then call the experts at Precision Repair Network. They are the specialists in repairing all makes and models of motorized wheelchairs and scooters. You can call 24-7 and they will come to you anywhere in the United States. They'll give you a loaner to use until they return yours in perfect condition. And your repairs may be covered by your Medicare or your private insurance, so there is little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. If your wheelchair or scooter needs repairs, call this special hotline now and learn how you can get door-to-door -door service on your repairs at little or no cost to you. Precision Repair Network. They'll get you moving again. Operators are ready to take your call right now. 800-978-4813. 800-978-4813. Eight hundred nine seven eight four eight one three. That's eight hundred nine seven eight forty eight thirteen. Constipation, gas, bloating, most people suffer through. But now, there's a simple solution for occasional digestive problems called Bactopro. Developed by holistic medical doctor David Brownstein, Bactopro is the fiber probiotic formula that supports healthy digestive and immune health. And it comes in the form of an easy-to-eat, tasty wafer. Bactopro contains six powerful strains of beneficial probiotic bacteria, dietary fiber, and bacteria-nourishing prebiotics, plus powerful antioxidants. Now you can receive a 30-day supply of Bactopro. Just cover a $4.95 shipping fee. Visit Bactopro.com slash special. Act now, and you'll also be given instant access to our downloadable special report, A Doctor's Guide to Probiotics and Your Health. Improve your digestive health now. Learn how you can receive your 30-day supply at backtopro.com slash special. That's B-A-C-T-I-P-R-O dot com slash special. Backtopro.com slash special. Do you have a motorized wheelchair or scooter that needs repairs and you don't know where to turn? Then call the experts at Precision Repair Network. They are specialists in repairing all makes and models of motorized wheelchairs and scooters. You can call 24-7 and they will come to you anywhere in the United States. They'll give you a loaner to use until they return yours in perfect condition. 
and your repairs may be covered by your Medicare or your private insurance, so there is little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. If your wheelchair or scooter needs repairs, call this special hotline now and learn how you can get door-to-door -door service on your repairs at little or no cost to you. Precision Repair Network. They'll get you moving again. Operators are ready to take your call right now. 800-978-4813. 800-978-4813. 800-978-4813. That's 800-978-4813. The Steve Malzberg Show is just a bit different from the other radio shows. We have TV cameras. Watch the show at Newsmax.com or listen on your favorite radio station. Here's Steve Malzberg. Hi, folks. Welcome back. We're going to do that Andrea Mitchell, uh, Congressman Sean Duffy uh, uh, soundbite segment at the top of the next hour. You're not going to want to miss it. Um, where Congressman Duffy slams Andrea Mitchell, MSNBC, and the media for for not asking the question, uh, the proper questions about Obamacare and the delay and the rollout and the whole thing. It's pretty intense. You're going to like it. I promise you. Uh, back to the busy phones uh, right now, 855-777-9660. Let's go to Dave in Colorado. Hello, Dave. You're on the Steve Ballsberg Show, sir. Hey, Steve. Hey, you're my favorite left-wing host, i got to tell you. Left-wing host. You're the only yeah. person who's ever called me a left-wing host, but go ahead. Well, you know, you're always saying how Obamacare you know, is going to collapse under its own weight. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I've never said Obamacare is going to collapse under its own weight. I've never used that terminology, and I've okay. never, I'm have never. i not one of those who subscribe to the fact that we should let it in and just watch it collapse, and then uh, then everybody will see, and then we could say na 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 No, once it's in— I, I, it's going to be almost impossible to get it out, so I've never said that. Okay, must be an, must be another liberal host of yours. Uh, let me do this. Let, let's do a good news, bad news. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the bad news is they're only signing up subscribers at a rate of what six thousand a day. I, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, so the good news is that the system will collapse for another fifty one thousand five hundred days which equates to 141 years so we're, 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 so we're really in great shape yeah very good shape absolutely well, let's hope they let's hope, let's hope they do their defense planning a little bit better and they've launched this obamacare and i you know what it just shows the competence the gross incompetence because you've had web people who have come forward on on pieces on cbs evening news and others that have been interviewed in packages saying that this could not have possibly been tested this could not have possibly been designed by anybody who knows what they're doing. I mean, it's just, it's not a surprise, but it's, 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 it's eye-opening. Well, you could buy a $300 web server and process 6,000 hits a day. So I'm really, I'm really surprised that they have uh, fallen down. So, so, I mean, we paid a lot of money for this. Loss yes, we and, did. And, Billions and of dollars. Real. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, I'll let you go. I just All right, Dave, so thank you for checking in. Have, have, yourself, have, ha have yourself a great liberal weekend. <laughs> Let's go to Brandon in Florida. Brandon, welcome back. You're on the Steve Malsberg Show, sir. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Good, how are you? Doing good. I'm uh, just uh, calling in, you know, about the flu shot. I, I don't really get one either. Uh, pretty much for a lot of the same reasons you do. You, one of my main reasons as well is you, you don't really know what's in them. Uh, as you said, you know, if you do get the flu, even if you get the shot, they, they always say it's a different strain. Right. So... You know, I, I don't really feel that it does anything good. And how do they really know that you're going to get that strain for the vaccine that they're making? Yeah, here's the thing. This is also basically run by the government. And and and, and you're, you're supposed to put your faith in the government. Now, look, thank God for polio vaccines and all those, you know, d d diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, all those vaccines. And, and, you know, and some people opt to give their children or take the chicken pox, whatever. But, you know... On it, when, when something changes every year, as the flu vaccine does, um, I just think it's, again, you're dealing with the same people almost who can't get this Obamacare off the ground. So, it, it, and this is going into your body. So, I, it, look, it works for people, but I, I opt not to do it. And God forbid, I hope I'm never sorry one day, but uh, I just opt not to do it. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. You know, I, 
I prefer to let my immune system uh, do its thing, and it hasn't failed me so far. Well, that's what I've always said, Dale, but my immune system has screwed me for the last four weeks, and I don't know what the heck's going on. But uh, So I'm getting a little nervous about it. But, uh, hey, thank you, Brandon. Thank you very much. I want to get to Dale um, in Colorado before we uh, reach the top of the hour. Hello, Dale. It's Friday on the Steve Malzberg Show. How you doing today? Good. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing fine. Hey, I wanted to chime in real quick on uh, both the flu shot and the Obamacare. Yeah, go ahead. we got about uh, two minutes left. Go ahead. Cool. As far as the uh, flu shot, you know, uh, most most of your medicines out there come with a little piece of a little packet of paper. It's about a quarter of an inch. Oh, long. yeah. When you, uh, when you unravel it, it tells you about all the uh, – it's like watching the commercial on TV. All the side effects you could have, all the possibilities of allergic reactions. Absolutely. That's the problem is it's not like watching the commercial. On the commercials on TV and when you talk to doctors and stuff, they tell you how safe the vaccine is. Oh, no, it's different for the flu shot. No, no, when you get medications in general, it's in the box. You're right, but n- not for the flu shot. You're absolutely right. They don't sit there when they're giving you the flu shot and say, here's a list of possible reactions. Here's a list of things to look out for. Here's what could happen. No, you're right. Right. So if you actually read that and match it up with what your doctor tells you, You'll, you'll find out your doctor's lying to you. Well, I, I like to think that my doctors don't lie to me, but I know what you're saying. We should There should be more information other than um, you need to get your flu shot, you know, and uh, they should get of consequences from it as well. Yeah, they, they give you the information. They won't tell you the information, but they give it to you. Yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you. Hey, Dale, thank you for calling. Thanks for weighing in. I want to thank everybody for uh, for weighing in. I think we had like uh, six calls in the last uh, half hour, which is uh, always nice. It's nice to be uh, to be noticed. That's what I got to say. Nice to talk to the folks out there as well. Folks, when we come back, uh, not only are we going to talk to um, Grover Norquist in the next uh, hour and uh, the author of Grow a Pair, How to Stop Being a Victim and Take Back Your Business, but we're also going to uh, hear... That exchange between Congressman Sean Duffy of Wisconsin and uh, Andrea Mitchell on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio. The Steve Malzberg Show. Obamacare, President Obama's massive health care law, is taking effect this year. With over 15,000 pages of regulations, few even know what it means. Now, the Obamacare Survival Guide by Nick Tate gives you the shocking facts about this law. It's a step-by-step guide on how you can protect yourself. Already a New York Times bestseller, every American needs to get the Obamacare Survival Guide and find out about the new taxes, hidden fees, fines, Medicare changes, business rules, and why doctor shortages are likely. Donald Trump says the Obamacare Survival Guide is a must-read for anyone worried about getting good health care for themselves or their employees. So get the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's at bookstores. Or get our special offer at Obamacare311.com, and you'll save $15. Go now to Obamacare311.com. That's Obamacare311.com. Do you suffer from joint discomfort? Contrary to what the experts may say, achy joints do not have to be a normal part of aging. Holistic doctor David Brownstein challenged conventional thinking to focus on natural solutions for joint health. As a result, Dr. Brownstein has recently developed Limbex, the premium nutritional supplement specifically formulated to support healthy joints and connective tissue. It's a new joint breakthrough formula containing 11 hand-picked nutrients. Learn more at limbexjoint.com special and take the 30-day Healthy Joint Challenge. That's a 30-day supply of the Limbex Joint Supplement. All you pay is a $4.95 shipping fee. Act now and you'll also be given instant access to our downloadable special report, A Doctor's Guide to Happy Healthy Joints at Any Age. You can do something about joint discomfort and flexibility. Learn how you can try it for 30 days at LimbexJoint.com special. That's L-I-M-B-E-X Joint.com special. LimbexJoint.com special. Hello and welcome to your Newsmax Now update. I'm John Bachman. There's no firm deal yet, but Republican lawmakers and President Obama are moving ahead with talks now about a plan to reopen the government. 
Details are limited, but there's also a potential deal in the works that could increase the debt limit. In exchange for spending cuts, President Obama met with Senate Republicans today. Congressional staffers also worked late into last night looking at a House plan to raise the nation's borrowing limit. Democrats in the White House say any deal to end the government shutdown also needs to raise the debt limit as well. But Republicans, including House Speaker John Boehner and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, say they still want to get something in return for striking a deal. Members on both sides of the aisle here in Congress are discussing solutions, and these discussions will continue. Now, some Republicans admit the party was forced to soften its stance because their approval ratings have hit an all-time low. Now, if a deal does get hammered out today, the government could be back open as soon as this weekend. Also, President Obama has signed a bill that will restore benefits for the families of service members killed during this government shutdown. The government typically pays out $100,000 within three days of a service member's death. However, because of the shutdown, the Pentagon said it was legally barred from paying that benefit while the government was closed. This law frees up that money while the shutdown continues. And a chemical weapons watchdog has won the Nobel Peace Prize for 2013. Judges in Norway awarded this year's Nobel Peace Prize to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW. Experts from OPCW are now overseeing the destruction of Syria's chemical weapons arsenal. The Netherlands-based group has the support of the UN and aims to shut down Syria's production of chemical weapons and all those facilities within a few weeks. Well, from the Peace Prize to more violence in the Middle East, a car bomb has exploded outside the Swedish consulate in the eastern Libyan city of Benghazi today. It damaged the building's front and some houses nearby, but fortunately there were no casualties immediately reported. This bomb does come just one day after Libya's prime minister, Ali Zidane, was briefly abducted by a group of former rebels. Nobody has claimed responsibility for the bombing attack, which also took place just a few days after U.S. Special Forces captured a Libyan al-Qaeda suspect in Tripoli. And a Medal of Honor recipient gets a hero's send-off in New Jersey. Sergeant Nicholas Oresco was awarded the Medal of Honor by then-President Harry Truman for his heroic actions during the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. Now, in the final stages of that pivotal battle, Sergeant Oresco took out two Nazi machine gun positions and 12 enemy fighters while being badly wounded himself. That was 68 years ago. He lived to be 94 years old. Good for him there. Coming up next on our Newsmax Now update, a Newsmax exclusive with former National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski. Plus, the East Coast is bracing for a wet weekend, another nor'easter, what those folks can expect. In 2013, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you are robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AFTbook.com. That's AFTbook.com. What is Lignet? Lignet is knowledge. Lignet is power. Lignet is global. Top level officials, U.S. intelligence officers, national security advisors, foreign operatives, all reporting directly to you. What is Lignet? Lignet is confidential. Lignet is sensitive. Lignet is security. What is Lignet? They're the ones taking the world's pulse. If you're not in the know, you're not on Lignet.com. You've been briefed. Here's today's silver shortage update from Lear Capital. Reports keep coming, the shortage is growing. Twice already this year, the U.S. Mint has run out. Last time this happened, the silver price jumped 40%. It's time to take advantage with this special offer from Lear Capital. For a limited time, buy 20 new silver polar bear coins and get one free. The only 1.5 ounce coin on the market. It's minted with the finest silver, carries a government guarantee, and is eligible for IRAs. The Silver Polar Bear is available exclusively from Lear Capital. But don't wait. Silver supplies are shrinking and availability is not guaranteed. This offer is limited to a minimum purchase of $5,000. Call right now. 800-634-0482. 800-634-0482. Call Lear Capital now. 800-634-0482. And welcome back, folks. In the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast are bracing for a wet weekend. And Nor'easter has been bringing lots of rain and has pushed tidal waters back into rivers and estuaries, leading to the high potential of flooding in some parts of New Jersey.
Jersey, and Maryland. Some of the areas are bracing for the storm. We're also affected by Superstorm Sandy last year, so hopefully this will not be as bad. And so with Democrats and Republicans apparently getting closer to some sort of deal, what has this shutdown and the risk of U.S. default meant to our credibility from a foreign policy standpoint? We asked that question to Zivyev Brzezinski, who served as the national security advisor to President Jimmy Carter. It's creating increasing uncertainty about the United States. And the loss of confidence in the United States is itself damaging to the United States. For the latest information about a possible solution to this government shutdown, of course, stay with Newsmax TV and Newsmax.com. I'm John Bachman. Today is October 10th. Now back to New York and the Steve Malzberg Show. Take care. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling 855-777. 9660. That's 855 777 9660. Or email Steve at Malsberg Show at Newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malsberg. All right, folks, so uh, welcome back. Uh, we have Jay Carney speaking. I don't know if we could get Jay Carney. All right, he just said that the president, you know, wants gun removed from the table, which is the threat of a, a debt ceiling, uh, you know, that they wouldn't raise the debt ceiling. Again, with the, the violent imagery. Uh, let's just listen to Jay Carney and the questions he's getting uh, right now. Enormous uncertainty for our economy. The president uh, is speaking with small business owners. I uh, heard from them that... You know, the continued threat of default uh, into that season would be very damaging to them. But, but and we can't, uh, we, we don't think that's the right you way said to go. yesterday, though, that the president would likely sign a short term mm -hmm. debt ceiling that still stands. Is that correct? He, yes. Here's what we, but let's be clear about what his position has been and what I've said. Uh, it is the very least that Congress could do to pass the legislation that would raise the debt ceiling for a short term and pass legislation that would uh, fund the government uh, for a short term as the Senate has already passed. Uh, and uh, the president has believed that, as I think I've stated many times, that we should raise the debt ceiling for longer than that, as the Senate has proposed and will vote on soon, uh, because we should not link the threat of default to budget negotiations. Uh, he's very eager to engage in budget negotiations. That's been something he's amply demonstrated all year long and is reflected in the budget proposal he made earlier this year. Uh, but we should not have a situation, a dynamic that led to where we are now, that led to what we saw in the summer of 2011 and that would be recreated in six weeks if we had to once again go through a process where one party was trying to extract concessions in budget negotiations in return for lifting the debt ceiling. I just want to try one more time. There, mm -hmm. there was a proposal that House Republicans came to the White House with yesterday for their meeting. And then House Republicans say there was a new proposal that they presented to White House staff last night that also included uh, reopening the government. The White House has received mm -hmm. that proposal. But I'm not, I'm not disputing that. I, uh, but I'm, what I'm saying... The White House's position, you're, it sounds like you're not well, accepting that proposal. I just want to make sure we can clarify that. What the... The president and the speaker agreed on in their phone conversation is that uh, everybody should keep talking. And the president appreciates the constructive approach uh, the, uh, that we've been seeing, uh, and that is certainly a change and a welcome change. And uh, he hopes that an agreement can be reached. In, in relation to the proposal that has been discussed in the press, uh, it is our view that uh, we cannot have a situation where we, the debt ceiling is extended uh, as part of a budget negotiation process for only six weeks, which would put us right back in the same position that we're in now. Uh, uncomplicated, but a clean debt ceiling increase for six weeks with no conditions attached to it is distinct from one that links it to a budget negotiation and the continued threat of default at a point of leverage in a budget negotiation, which is just, again, continually uh, putting the American economy at risk uh, in an effort to achieve some partisan advantage, which uh, we can't, can't All right, so it seems like here's the deal, the ladies and gentlemen. It seems like here's the deal. Uh, the president will not accept. Uh, I just wish he would say, you know, to, with the, earlier before we started uh, listening to Jay Carney, he said the president wants him to take the gun off the table. I mean, this is baloney, and I'm, I'm really fighting back from not saying worse. Enough with this violent imagery. What's the kick? What's the rush that the left gets out of, out of this violent imagery? 
and this kidnapping and terrorists and hostage taking and arsonists and anarchists and guns and gun to the head. What is it? Enough. Man. Uh, um, anyway, having said that, uh, the president apparently would accept a debt ceiling uh, extension raise for six weeks, but not if it's directly linked in legislation to negotiations over the budget. So there you go. I don't know what's going to happen here. But uh, just lose the gun imagery and lose the references to the violence, will you? Is that too much to ask? What is the left's fascination with this violent imagery? I'd love to know. I'd love to talk to a shrink and see what's wrong with these people. I really would like to see what's wrong with these people. Okay. Hope we have time for this. Um, Appearing on um, uh, Andrea Mitchell's MSNBC show earlier in the week, Wisconsin Congressman Sean Duffy slammed the press for not covering Obamacare rightfully. Here's cut number nine. As you can't take this piecemeal, Congressman. Uh, you, you know, isn't the issue that someone has to sit down and figure out what to do about the stalemate? Well, you, you, hit, this, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, and the president has said, I won't sit at the table. Well, Harry Reid said, I won't negotiate. He said to, he and, said to the and, speaker and, and, today on the phone, he said that he will negotiate and negotiate a lot of things that you all want, tax reform, entitlements, well, that he will negotiate once the threat of the government shutdown and of the debt so, default is not hanging over their heads. A that's what he said. Andrew, Andrew, that's ridiculous. And I don't know, I mean, you, I think you said you were, you've been uh, through 18 shutdowns. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen a president that has come and said, I'm not going to negotiate. I mean, this is historic that a president says, I'm not going to sit at the table. Right. Saying I'll sit at the table after you, this is earlier in the week before the latest back and forth between the president and the Republicans. Keep that in mind. But Andrea Mitchell saying, oh, yeah, he'll negotiate. You just open the government raise the debt ceiling, and then he'll talk to you. Duh. But that, see, Andrea Mitchell, that she, she either really believes that or that's what she's told to say or that's what she knows the White House wants her to say because that's ludicrous. Why would the president talk to them after he government's open and the debt ceiling's raised? Here's the next cut, uh, cut 10. You're, you're putting on the table a non-negotiable demand. Listen, that he's, that, is it non-negotiable that... Uh, he's not going to enter Obamacare, and he's going to say, I get my gold-plated health care plan, but uh, I want members of the country and the rest of America to be in Obamacare. That is, that's not negotiable? Come on. That's not reasonable. I mean, wh one, one issue that we have is the media won't even ask the question about why are you treating families different than big, big businesses? You need Jon Stewart on Comedy Central to ask Secretary Sebelius, hey, why won't you treat these two equally? And she can't answer it. I mean, that's how pathetic I think news reporting has become when we won't ask tough questions to the administration. Well, we've I asked questions up, to I'll both take sides. All... Uh, th that's well, not fair. Uh, uh... Oh, yeah. Andrea Mitchell asks tough questions to both sides. Woohoo! Sure she does. Uh, number 11. Do you ask that question, Andrea? We have, ask we the question. have asked that question. And so the, the, the basic why, point why, is why that... Do you want, why do you want your own health care and you won't join us in Obamacare? That question I haven't seen anybody ask on MSNBC. Please ask it because they don't have a good, they don't have a good answer for it. Well, I think but the, in response to actually, be, the response that Kathleen Sebelius gave to Jon Stewart was if we had gotten what we wanted, which was a single-payer plan, uh, this wouldn't <laughs> be the problem. <laughs> That's right. You, you say, I think, I think this is what they would say, but you don't know what they would say because you haven't asked. You yep, he's brilliant. He's he's really and and you know she she doesn't care. What does she care? She looks like a hero to her left wing of friends that are watching this show and the White House. And here's the final cut. This is cut number uh, twelve. You're asking me about the larger issue of why can't people resolve this government shutdown? And we have been incredibly reasonable, making a small ask. And if the president Do you doesn't like a small what ask we've that he get rid of the central part of his health care plan that was upheld by a by the vote yeah. of a presidential Andrea. election and the United States. Supreme Court. Andrew, that, hold on. That's your spin. The, the president gave a one-year exemption spin. for, listen, one, he gave a one-year exemption for businesses in regard to taxes um, and penalties in Obamacare. Why won't he join us in Obamacare? Why wasn't Michelle Obama on, uh, on October 1st at the computer with her family signing up for Obamacare? Or Jay Carney? They have their own gold-plated health care plan well, so that they're in, and they don't, no, I'm not. I'm in Obamacare. I'm in Obamacare, Andrea. All members of Congress are in my family. The president should join us in Obamacare and the rest of America. That's, is that pretty reasonable? We should all be treated equally under the law? Why should members of Congress be in Obamacare, not the president?
Explain that one. Isn't that fair? Well, I think that the, do you, do, can, can you defend that? Can you defend why the president shouldn't be in Obamacare like members of Congress and their staffs? I can't. Ba 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 ba. Hamina 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 hamina. Ed Norton. <laughs> it all comes back to the honeymooners. He, you know what he did. I don't have to say what he did. You know what he did. Uh, Congressman uh, uh, Sean Duffy from uh, Wisconsin with Andrea Mitchell on MSNBC earlier in the week. You know what he did. Uh, okay. I will go no further. When we come back, we'll be joined by Larry Wingate, author of Grow a Pair, How to Stop Being a Victim and Take Back Your Life, Your Business, and Your Sanity, and relate it all to uh, the government today as well, right here on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio. The Steve Malzberg Show. Are you worried about not having enough money to retire? Finally, there's a retirement solution designed to address the damage that the government spending policies and the Federal Reserve have inflicted on the value of the dollar. Introducing the Heritage Advantage IRA, the new gold and silver-backed retirement account from Heritage Gold Group. Don't let the declining value of the dollar put your retirement in jeopardy. The Heritage Advantage IRA puts retirement savers back in control with physical gold and silver combined with the tax advantages of an IRA. Call 855-GOLD. IRA to request your free no obligation Heritage Advantage IRA kit. Inside, you'll find information about how to buy physical gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. No additional investment required. Call 855 Gold IRA for your free Advantage IRA kit. Don't wait. Plans for new regulations may eliminate rules allowing you to buy gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. Call 855 Gold IRA. That's 855 465 3472. Hello, my name is Fred IRA. That's 855-465-3472. Hello, my name is Fred on Newsmax or heard LigNet referenced on Fox News, C-SPAN, or CNN. Perhaps you've asked yourself, what is LigNet? LigNet is an acronym for the Langley Intelligence Group. Ask yourself, what is LigNet? LigNet is an acronym for the Langley Intelligence Group analysis and detailed forecasting. Who is Lignet? Lignet's staff and advisors include former CIA officers, national security experts, presidential advisors, and top-level government officials from around the world. I myself held several national security posts for the U.S. government during my 25-year career with the Central Intelligence Agency, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the U.S. Department of State, and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Our lead advisor, Intelligence Agency, the U.S. Department of State, and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Our lead advisor, the United Nations, John Bolton, and former chairman of the National Intelligence Council and special assistant to President Ronald Reagan, Fritz Ehrmann. Former U.S. Ambassador to Venezuela, Otto Reich, and former to President Ronald Reagan, Fritz Ehrmann. Former U.S. Ambassador to Venezuela, Otto Reich, and former also join our advisory board staff. What is Lignet's mission? Every day our goal is to use our expertise, our resources, and our worldwide staff to take the pulse of the ever-changing political and economic landscape and the threats we face on a daily basis. Whether you are following global events for your portfolio or business, or just interested in the world around you, Lignet provides what you need to know to keep up with global events. What are the benefits of joining Lignet? There are many. Every day, Lignet members receive The Morning Brief, a daily email that provides summaries and links to our daily analysis to keep you up to date on Lignet's assessments. Lignet members receive unrestricted access to Lignet's secure database of global analysis. All of our special reports, previous analyses, and exclusive video interviews with intelligence insiders are available to members 24 hours a day. But you also get top-notch analysis that resembles the President's Daily Brief, the classified intelligence assessment delivered to the President of the United States every morning. Lignet also sends breaking news emails to our membership list. If there is a development of global proportions or a terror alert, our subscribers are always the first to know. I hope you now have a better understanding of what Lignet is, but more importantly, recognize how truly invaluable Lignet can be. As the old saying goes, knowledge is power. Join Lignet for $1. Go to lignet.com slash radio.
breaking news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I got to catch up on my heartbreaking. I don't think that's really uh, that's really uh, been happening too much lately. All right, welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show. Um, joining us now is a man who could uh, maybe put a, a very interesting perspective on what we're witnessing here, and I'll ask him the question, too, about these uh, the, the, this violent imagery that the uh, left seems to be just uh, obsessed with when uh, whenever mentioning what's going on with the government. We welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Winget. He is author of Grow a Pair. How to Stop Being a Victim and Take Back Your Life, Your Business, and Your Sanity. Might be too late for most of our sanity, uh, Larry, but welcome to the show. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. And, of course, uh, you also uh, you, you start in your own TV series. You've been on uh, a national TV, commercials, the whole thing. But uh, y- your book is, is very interesting because it's uh, – as you do, it speaks the truth. I mean, it's in your face. You know, it's it's not you know tiptoeing around the issues. If you got a problem, if you uh, aren't getting respected, or if you feel you're disrespected, or if you feel you you're getting picked on, or if you feel you you have a liability, it, tell, it it just in your face how to address all those things and 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 get over them, right? Absolutely. You know, and uh, I have one central philosophy that's come through. I've written six bestsellers now, and my central philosophy is life's your own damn fault. Uh, whatever you're going through right now, you created that mess, and we're certainly creating that mess that we're living in right now in our society in every single way. You know, my first book was Shut Up, Stop Whining, and Get a Life, went through You're Broke Because You Want to Be, People Are Idiots, and I Can Prove It, several others, and now we're up to grow a pair because I think we live in a society of wimps and weenies. Well, we're, I, I could tell you that the, the society – has, is trying to raise our boys and has been trying to raise our boys and has been successful to some extent um, with, uh, with uh, making our boys into all the aforementioned uh, that you just, uh, that you just <laughs> uttered. I mean, it's absolutely well, look at the news true. This week, when we we're saying that you can't play tag and we're taking balls, out of I was just going to bring system. that up. There's a new a school now that won't let you play tag. They took yeah. balls away from another school, and and you know, if a kid, God forbid, puts a thumb in his forefinger in kindergarten and says "bang," he gets written up and he's suspended. Yeah, or eats his pop tart in the shape of a gun. It's just all stupid. And you know what? That's our fault as parents. Parents need to step up and fire everybody on the school board, everybody who – they work for us, folks, and that's what we need to remember about all these people. They work for us, and everybody gets by with everything they can get by with. And when we stop letting people get by with all this stupid crap, we can turn society around. All right, so let's, let's, let's talk about and, and relate it a little bit, uh, Larry, to uh, what's going on in Congress. First of all – I, maybe you like this. I don't know. But when you – again today, Jay Carney, the president's spokesman, comes forward, and he says the president spoke to John Boehner. They're going to keep talking. But he, but still in all, he says, but they got to take the gun off the table. I mean, it doesn't stop. They have this preoccupation, this fascination, this desire to keep on with the violent imagery. They're arsonists. They're anarchists. They're kidnappers. They're terrorists. They're jihadists. They're holding us hostage. They got a gun to our head every time they open their mouth. No, you're right, and that's really what that's indicative of is just scaring people. Because when the American people, who are really pretty uninformed about all of this, hear that, they really believe that, oh, my God, they're holding a gun to their head. They are holding these people hostage. Now, I don't mean literally a gun to their head. Maybe some people are that stupid. But people buy into that imagery. That's why they use it. Why do people do stuff? It works. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. But you say, you, all right, how do politicians grow a pair? And, and which politicians do you see? I mean, do they all need to grow a pair in your view? Yeah. Or, okay, why? How? I do believe. I think both sides need to grow a pair. And I've been getting a lot of mail from both sides so proud that uh, I get from the liberals saying they're so proud for Obama to say we won't negotiate and standing up to the Republicans. And I get it from Republicans saying Boehner finally grew a pair and say we're going to stand up to Obama. Listen, both sides need to grow a pair. People who have a pair do their job. They understand that they have been hired to do something. And, you know, sometimes your job is to sit down face-to-face with people that you don't like, you don't admire, you don't respect, you don't agree with, and do what you are being paid to do. Every one of these politicians is paid to keep the government open, 
to look for the best interest of the American people, and neither side is doing that right now. And and by the way, we're, we're talking uh, to, to uh, Larry Wittenget. He is the author of Grow a Pair, How to Stop Being a Victim and Take Back Your Life here on the Steve Malzberg Show. So I guess by extension, and you might have touched on this, uh, uh, constituents, us, the people, we the people, uh, in your view, could grow a pair by what? By by doing what they what a lot of people do, especially on the right at town hall meetings, but even more so, you know, making yourself heard, like you said, go to the school board, etc. Doing that with your elected uh, representatives too, right? Oh, absolutely. And what, this is what people really hate. They need to understand that our politicians are a reflection of us. Our government is a reflection of our families and our businesses. You know, people are, just like I said, they're doing what they can get by with. We've got to remind them they can't get by with this crap. It's unacceptable. How do you do that? Just like you would in a business at a performance review, you sit down and say, you didn't do what you were hired to do. You're fired. And the performance review for politicians is election time. The problem is we just keep voting the same stupid people back in, and then we act like we're surprised when they keep doing the same stupid stuff. They need a severe performance review. And, and you know, one thing that, that, that caught my attention at the beginning when you, you said, you know, the, the different books you've written in the past. Um, if you're if you're in financial uh, straits, um, do you make any allowances for people who you know were were victimized by this economy, who can't get a job? They they had a great job and now they have to take a lesser job and work part time. And I, I mean, did, is there any uh, empathy there? Not a whole lot uh, of empathy. First of all, when you consider the forty percent of our society spends more money than they earn, those forty percent that's stupid. When that they didn't have any savings, the average 50-year-old in America has $2,500 cash saved. That's stupid. You're 50 years old and you've only been able to put away $2,500. So, yeah, I understand that people go through tough times, and I have some empathy for the fact that everybody experiences it. But if you're not prepared in any way, and if you're sitting back and saying, I'm better than that, I deserve more than this job that I'm having to take, that's wrong. You need to grow up here and remember, you agreed to keep your commitments. People need more of a commitment to their commitments, their commitments to their bills and their family. Gotcha. All right, Larry Winget, uh, Grow a Pair is the book. Uh, Great talking to you, Larry. I hope you'll come back. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for Uh, having me. My pleasure. All right, folks, uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to be joined by Grover Norquist, president of Americans for Tax Reform, uh, on the latest uh, on the shutdown. Uh, what he sees as possible uh, remedy and what he thinks of the latest Republican proposal and Democratic response from Jay Carney. The latest right here on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Malzberg Show. If you're a man over 40, your prostate could be forcing you to urinate frequently, even disrupting your sleep multiple times each night. You're not alone. Over half of men over 40 experience age-related prostate concerns. Fortunately, prominent medical doctor David Brownstein believes aging prostate concerns are not inevitable. That's why Dr. Brownstein developed Prostate Revive, an advanced dietary supplement containing a unique blend of 15 ingredients designed to promote optimal prostate health. So men, as part of this new radio promotion, you now have the opportunity to claim your own 30-day supply of Prostate Revive, containing salt palmetto, beta cytosterol, and numerous other prostate helpers just cover a four dollar and 95 cent shipping and handling charge plus if you act now you'll also get a doctor's guide to a healthy prostate as a bonus gift please visit prostaterevive.com slash radio for details on getting your 30-day supply of prostate revive and free report that's prostaterevive.com slash radio do something about those annoying age-related prostate concerns visit prostaterevive.com slash radio now while supplies last Men, this is the time in your life when you have more freedom to travel, more time for leisure, including an active lifestyle, even a renewed intimacy. The last thing you want is the hassle of an aging prostate. Frequent trips to the bathroom also keep you awake at night. But here's good news. Renowned physician Dr. David Brownstein believes that prostate concerns do not have to be an inevitable part of aging. As a result, Dr. Brownstein has recently developed Prostate Revive, the dietary supplement specifically formulated to help improve and sustain normal prostate function. Learn more about how you can receive a 30-day supply of Prostate Revive. Just cover a $4.95 shipping fee. Visit prostaterevive.com special for complete details. Act now and you'll also be given instant access to our downloadable special report, A Doctor's Guide to a Healthy Prostate. While supplies last, try Prostate Revive for 30 days at prostaterevive.com special. That's prostaterevive.com special. 
If you're a man over 40, your prostate could be forcing you to urinate frequently, even disrupting your sleep multiple times each night. You're not alone. Over half of men over 40 experience age-related prostate concerns. Fortunately, prominent medical doctor David Brownstein believes that aging prostate concerns are not inevitable. That's why Dr. Brownstein developed Prostate Revive, an advanced dietary supplement containing a unique blend of 15 ingredients designed to promote optimal prostate health. So men, as part of this new radio promotion, you now have the opportunity to claim your own 30-day supply of Prostate Revive, containing salt palmetto, beta cytosterol, and numerous other prostate helpers. Just cover a $4.95 shipping and handling charge. Plus, if you act now, you'll also get a doctor's guide to a healthy prostate as a bonus gift. Please visit ProstateRevive.com slash radio for details on getting your 30-day supply of Prostate Revive and free report. That's ProstateRevive.com slash radio. Do something about those annoying age-related prostate concerns. Visit ProstateRevive.com slash radio now while supplies last. Hi, this is Mike Reagan. You need to watch out because thousands of new Obamacare rules are currently being implemented, and few know what the law says or does. Listen to what Senator Max Baucus, one of the authors of the Obamacare law, recently said. I tell you, I just see a huge train wreck coming down, and I don't see any results yet. I just see a huge train wreck. He's right. So protect yourself from this train wreck. Get the number one bestseller, the Obamacare Survival Guide. Best guide to the new law. Join more than a half a million Americans who have their copy. Get the number one bestseller, the Obamacare Survival Guide, at bookstores everywhere. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 off the cover price by going now to Obamacare311.com. Obamacare311.com. That's Obamacare311.com. This is not go scream fest talk show. No. no, no. This is the next generation of talk radio. Here is Steve Malsberg. Do you feel like you owe your party an apology? Uh, <laughs> if, if, listen, you, you had you had people who believed in you. They believed that you were going to somehow be able to defund Obamacare. They believed that this strategy of shutdown might have a chance. They followed you into a ditch, and now there's obviously no chance that Obamacare is going to be defunded and we're on the brink of a, a horrific default. Do you think that in the reflection of your own heart, you might say, you know what, I'm a new kid here. I think I owe you guys an apology. Uh, you know, Van, I know you desperately want to change the topic from Obamacare. And All right, there you go. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz on um, Crossfire last night with uh, Van Jones. Uh, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Joining us now is uh, a man who has been very critical of uh, of uh, Senator Cruz and uh, and uh, the uh, I guess the game plan, if there is one, for the Republican Party, and that is uh, Grover Norquist, a president of Americans for Tax Reform. Hello, hello sir. Hello, Grover. Do we have Mr. Norquist? Grover. All right, we're having a little little problem. We'll uh, we'll reset. We'll readjust. We'll try again. Um, let me know. Put him put him on hold and talk to him and see if he's there. Is he there? All right, he's not there. So let's try to uh, to, to get him back. Um, also, um, we plan um, on talking later in the show with Christopher Parker, uh, political science professor at University of uh, of uh, Washington and author of Change They Can't Believe In. Um, he accuses the Tea Party of all kinds of things being driven by racism, homophobia, xenophobia, you name it. You know, if there's a letter to be put on your chest to throw at you in a derogatory fashion, uh, Christopher Parker is uh, is there to do it if you're, you're a Tea Party member. We'll talk to him. And also, Malzberg's Media Madness with uh, Noel Shepard. So uh, that's all straight ahead here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, Grover Norquist has been very critical of uh, Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, saying he has no plan, no strategy for resolving the uh, the conflict over Obamacare, and that he should apologize to Republicans, which is the question that um, that was just asked uh, that we played you that was asked yesterday by Van Jones. I can't believe Van Jones is the is on television as a co-host of anything. Van Jones, um, Stephanie Cutter. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, so I'm very anxious to hear if uh, Grover believes that. Uh, 
that that is the case as well, that he should apologize. Any 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 luck? All right, uh, Grover? Yes, sir. Hey, Grover, Steve Molesberg, how are you? It's good to talk to you again. Good. Okay, I'm I know. Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully the uh, the the cell phone will uh, will will work. Uh, we just heard. I don't know if you heard. We played as an intro to you the uh, a soundbite with Van Jones on Crossfire uh, asking if he uh, owed Republicans an apology. And I know in the past you have said that uh, he does. Uh, Ted Ted Cruz, I should say, does he owe uh, Americans and, and the Republicans an apology? Uh, you still believe that he owes the party an apology? Well. My, my comment was that he owes an apology to those Republican members of the House who he said he had a strategy that was going to win the uh, five or 15 Democratic Senate votes for abolition of uh, Obamacare uh, that would be necessary. If you're going to abolish Obamacare, you're going to defund Obamacare, you need a majority of the House. We've got a majority of the House. And I focused on that. But other All right, you know Grover, I'm so sorry. Uh, the, the 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 connection we're hearing like every other word. So we'll try to fix this uh, at some point within this half hour. And if we could do that, if you could move to a hard line or something, I'll have the producer talk to you right now off the air. Uh, I'm very sorry, very sorry to you folks out there listening as well, because uh, I really love to hear what uh, what Grover has to say. Um, unfortunately, uh, we we cannot do that right now. So we will. Uh, we will um, hopefully get him at some point on a hard line, uh, possibly in uh, this uh, this half hour. If not, we'll uh, we'll talk to Grover on Monday or something. Um, but um, okay, so I, th- there are there are a couple of other items that I would like to um, to talk about. I plan to do this one a little later. Uh, two items uh, right here. One involves uh, Jason Collins. Do you remember Jason Collins? Jason Collins is the um, the, the uh, NBA player who came out earlier this year after the NBC, NBA season had, had ended. Uh, he came out last spring. He, he announced that he is a gay professional basketball player. And right away they started saying he's Jackie Robinson. No, he's uh, Rosa Parks. He's, you know, th- th- unbelievable stuff. Uh, to me, there's no comparison to Jackie Robinson or to Rosa Parks or anybody else uh, that I could think of. Um, this man's a millionaire. This man, you know, could, could, could go anywhere he wants, do anything he wants. And this man, um, you know, is not being called names uh, uh, while he plays basketball and, 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 and treated to staying in separate hotels and eating in different restaurants and going through the hell, the hell that Jackie Robinson was put through, okay? Now, that aside, having said all that, um, Harvey Arriton of the columnist for the New York Times has uh, written a story. It appeared in the New York Times yesterday um, lamenting the fact that uh, Jason Collins is not signed. As we are less than a month away from the beginning of the NBA season, Jason Collins is a man without a team. Now, he was a man without a team. He was a free agent. He had played for, the, I believe, the Wizards last year and he was a free agent when he announced that he was gay so technically he was not on a team when he made his announcement as I told you when he made the announcement uh, last spring so now now uh, um, Harvey Arriton writes but with training camp for a new season underway he's been waiting for a call from an NBA team any NBA team when Collins 34 a seven-foot center wrote his coming-out cover story for Sports Illustrated, My Declaration. That's what it was called. He said he proudly spoke of having been called a pro's pro for his uh, team-first lunch pail style. Never a star. He's nonetheless had a career spanning 12 years, six teams after four years at Stanford where he played with his twin, Jaron. Now, okay, understand. 12 years, six teams. He's a journeyman. That's what they call an athlete like that, who's, who's played on, you know, that's, that's like another two teams, two years, and then you change teams. So he's a journeyman. He's tall. He's valuable for that reason. He's unselfish. Fine. Great. Team player. Great. But he's also 34 years old. 34 years old. Now, there's a lot at play here. Um, and Harvey Arriton writes, the question Collins has to ponder is why he has not been signed as a free agent. Is it because he is at best a marginal player? With modest career stats, 
3.6 points a game, 3.8 rebounds a game, nearing the end of his career, one who would cost more than a younger player based on the league's collectively bargained pay scale, or is there something more sinister at work related to the new role he would play? Folks, if I'm not mistaken, Harvey Arrington and Philip Bondi. Now, it, I'm pretty sure it was both. They wrote a book, uh, and, and I'm 99% I'm, I'm sure it was both. This is 20 years ago, and did a series in the New York Post about this book. I, I, I think. If, 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 if Harvey wasn't involved, I apologize, but I'm 99% sure it was. Lamenting the fact that these poor black NBA players had to play for white coaches and had to, had to deal with PR directors who were white. These poor, slavish, black NBA players. How could they be expected to function playing for a white coach and dealing with white PR? I mean, I, I remember at the time I was doing sports talk in addition to my political talk, or maybe I hadn't even reached political talk yet, but I always had a political angle in my sports talk, so that was right up my angle, uh, right up my alley, or my angle. And I went nuts. I went nuts. This was a series. And again, I, for some reason, I'm lumping Philip Bondi and Harvey Arrington together. Could you Google Philip Bondi with Philip with an F? Philip Bondi and Harvey Arrington co-author book and see if something comes up because I'm, I'm, that's what I'm remembering. So this is, this is where it's coming from. But I said at the time when Jason Collins came out, I said, folks, he's getting up there in age. He's a you know, average player at best. He doesn't like he doesn't have a team right now. He's a free agent. The Ma the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, uh, Mark Cuban, said I'd love to have him on my team as the first gay player. I'd welcome him on my team. I don't know what's happened with that, but to suggest, in my opinion, to suggest that he hasn't been picked up by a, by a, uh, an NBA team yet because he announced that he was gay. I'm sorry. It doesn't fly. It just doesn't fly. It doesn't fly. His statistics, his age, the salary, the fact that they would have to pay him, him more than a younger, better player is probably what's at hand here. Probably what's at hand. Okay. All right, together, though, Harvey Arrington and Philip Bondi, together? That's what I want to know. Did they co-author a book? All right, then maybe Arrington wasn't involved in that NBA book. Okay. The Selling of the Green, that might uh, that was about the Celtics, possibly. All right, I'll f yeah, Harvey Arrington. Okay, The Selling of the Green. That uh, was about the Boston Celtics, I guess. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do more research. But here, Harvey, uh, uh, here Harvey's column is much more balanced, I will say, his story on this. Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets were thought to be a potential landing site because Collins spent about half of his career with the Nets when they played in New Jersey, where he was a trusted teammate of Jason Kidd, who was now the team's coach. But with the Nets soaring payroll, Collins would have cost the team almost four times his salary in taxes. Not taxes to Uncle Sam, taxes to the NBA under the salary cap, etc. So the way he's just a victim in addition to his limited skills and his age and everything else, he's a victim of the, the, the salary structure of the NBA. And I really think to imply anything else is, um, is, is just really out of line. Really out of line. Uh, Collins noted when the Indiana Center Roy Hibbert made a homophobic report to the news, he was immediately fined. Yeah, Collins isn't claiming that, that it's a gay thing. Arrington is bringing up that possibility in this piece. So I just, um, I'd love to know what you think about that. If you think the NBA has somehow blacklisted uh, Jason Collins because uh, he came out last, uh, last spring or if it's, or, you know, or not. I mean, there's no way to tell. It's only an opinion unless you had some kind of a uh, letter uh, of collusion or conspiracy. But I knew this would happen. I warned last, last, last spring. I said, he's a free agent. He's not on a team. And if he's not signed at 34, going on 35, mediocre player, role player, costs a lot of money, I said, you're going to start hearing cries of, oh, it's because he's gay. And I said, right then and there, there's a good chance he will not be signed by another team because he's not that valuable, really. And, and, and with the cost of such a role player, 
it becomes prohibitive. So just keep that in mind. All right. We'll come back, see if we could get Grover. If not, we got a lot of goodies in store for you. Don't you worry. And you're always welcome on the phones, as we showed in the last hour, 855-777-9660, 855-777-9660, right here on the Steve. But you can answer the question, should uh, uh, Ted Cruz apologize to the Republican Party? I say no. Is Jason Collins being blacklisted by the NBA? I say no. On the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Malzberg Show. Do you have trouble remembering things you've known for years? Do you want to maintain your mental edge, support your memory, focus, and attention? After extensive research, Dr. Russell Blaylock discovered four essential nutrients that help sustain optimal brain function. Dr. Russell Blaylock then personally formulated Cresio, the dietary supplement containing these four brain boosters that promote brain cognitive health, improve learning and retention. Cresio supports brain circulation and provides antioxidant protection. And now you can receive a 30-day supply of Cresio. All you pay is a $4.95 shipping fee. Visit Cresio.com slash special. Act now and you'll also be given instant access to our downloadable special report, Nature's Brain Boosters, Essential Nutrients for Peak Mental Performance. Give your brain the healthy support it needs. Learn how you can receive your 30-day supply at Cresio.com slash special. That's C-R-E-S-C-E-O dot com slash special. Cresio.com slash special. Hi, this is Mike Reagan. Folks ask me, what would Ronald Reagan do if he were with us today? I believe the first thing he'd do is stop Obamacare. Already it's in effect with higher taxes, hidden fees, skyrocketing insurance rates, big Medicare cuts, and some insurance plans are hit with a 40% tax. Protect yourself by getting the Obamacare Survival guide. It's already a number one New York Times bestseller. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law, giving you the strategies, tips, and goals you need to know. If you're insured, a Medicare, a business owner, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need this book. Get the number one bestseller, the Obamacare Survival Guide, at bookstores everywhere. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 off the cover price by going now to Obamacare311.com. Obamacare311.com. That's Obamacare311.com. This is the worst weather we've seen in quite some time, folks. And I don't see any end in sight. People have been calling in from across the state complaining their basements are flooding. One guy said he now has an indoor swimming pool in his basement. I told him he needs the waterproofing innovations from basement systems. If you want a dry basement or crawl space that will weather any kind of storm, you need the patented solutions from basement systems. You've seen them on home makeover shows throughout the country. With a lifetime warranty, every solution is custom designed for your basement. You can finally have that room you've always wanted with our total basement finishing system. Call now for a free estimate, and you'll never have to worry about storms like these again. Call now for your free basement inspection at 800-516-9794, 800-516-9794. Learn how to waterproof your basement. Now, call this number, 800-516-9794, 800-516-9794. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45, non-tobacco user, could obtain one $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-430-1309. 800-430-1309. 800-430-1309. 
Bad credit card debt happens to good people. Credit card companies lure you in with low introductory rates or low minimum payments. And before you know it, you owe thousands of dollars in credit card debt. It has happened to millions of good people just like you. But here's the good news. Thanks to a powerful program now approved, anyone with $2,000 or more in credit card debt can cut their credit card payments up to half and even reduce or eliminate interest charges altogether. That's right. Our nationwide nonprofit program is helping U.S. residents cut their credit card payments. Call 800-613-3159 now. The call and information are free. We've helped over half a million people with their credit card debt, and now we can help you. Call 800-613-3159 to see how this powerful nonprofit program can work for you. Bad credit card debt happens to good people. Get free of credit card debt today. Call 800-613-3159. That's 800-613-3159. Again, 800-613-3159. The Steve Mossberg Show is just a bit different from the other radio shows. We have TV cameras. Watch the show at Newsmax.com or listen on your favorite radio station. Here's Steve Mossberg. Hi, folks. I am very uh, happy to report that we have Grover Norquist, president of Americans for Tax Reform, uh, back on the line. Thank you, Grover. Appreciate you accommodating us. Absolutely. I don't know what happened, but we sure love service. Sorry. Yes, we did. That's okay. Hey, that happens. Okay, so you're in the middle of, of uh, answering my question, which was, uh, does Ted Cruz uh, owe uh, Republicans an apology? Yeah, and this, and this is the reason. Look, every single Republican in the House and the Senate has voted more than once to abolish Obamacare. Ted Cruz said he had a theory or a strategy that if the House would vote to attach it to the CR, he would make the Democrats in the Senate uh, vote to, to have it happen and make the president sign it, and that if the House would just pass this and refuse to do anything else, no other agreement would be good enough for Ted Cruz, that this would happen. And so the House Republicans passed the bill, sent it to the Senate, and Ted Cruz says, we don't have the votes here. So here's what I want you to do next. You know. And that's why the House Republicans were so irritated he, he promised he was going to magically, I don't understand it, because, and I asked the people who were advocating this position, please explain to me how you get five or 15 Democrats to agree to abolish Obamacare, and how do you get the president to sign it? And if the president won't sign it, you need 67 uh, senators, uh, and you need six, and a two-thirds of the House. Arithmetic told you this strategy that Ted had was never going to work. There was no way this was going to work. Not only that, but no effort was made. All those groups sending out emails about how they were going to defund Obamacare, none of them spent a penny trying to get a single Democrat vote. They sent insulting emails and, and questioned the manhood and the patriotism and, and uh, the, 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 the bravery of every Republican who didn't agree with their strategy. That doesn't get you a single vote. All those Republicans were in favor of abolishing Obamacare if there was any way you could show them how. If you'd brought them, the Democrats over to agree, you'd have had every single Republican vote to say, oh, well, we'll get the Democrats if the Republicans vote. We tried that. The Republicans voted, and no Democrat came over. So Ted Cruz needs to explain to the Republicans why he just spent several months and then several weeks dragging them across you know, broken glass for no purpose, with no idea of how you're going to win. And to this day, they cannot articulate how they were going to get the Democratic votes and the president's signature, other than that the president, when we went into default, the president would change his mind and give us everything we wanted. All right, fair, fair enough. But uh, having said that, I think it was only the first CR uh, that uh, that the, um, uh, the, de the Republicans passed in the House that called for defunding Obamacare, if even that. But then they right away went to the medical device tax and the one-year uh, right. delay in implementation of the inv individual mandate, which Actually, I believe you wanted the one-year delay also. Faith yeah. that Ted Cruz was going to deliver what he said he was going to deliver. They went to Plan B, C, and D and walked away from Ted Cruz's, which didn't work. That was what happened. That, that's... That's Ted Cruz's break with the Republicans was he told them something was going to happen. It didn't happen. And they said, OK, no more taking 
leadership from right, you. But, 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 but I, I just feel that too much uh, uh, of the target, if you will, to, to steal the rhetoric of the, of the right with the violent imagery that they seem obsessed with, uh, too much of the targeting by some Republicans has been against Ted Cruz and not against, you know, I keep hearing, just, uh, ju- just, uh, just bring the, to the floor a, a clean CR in the House and, and it'll pass. Well, how about Harry Reid taking up one of the piecemeal uh, so-called uh, pieces of legislation that would fund the National Institute of Health, fund the Veterans uh, Services, fund the National Parks and Monuments, and maybe they, they would pass. What Democrats are going to go on record voting against them? And, and none of them have been brought for a vote. So my point is there's plenty to, to take to test. Harry Reid, the Democrats, Barack Obama, who, by the way, has a 60 percent disapproval rating from right. independents, yet we're focused on Ted Cruz and our own. No, no. Let's understand where this started. I know where it Ted started, Cruz but we're past and that the people now. around him said that anyone who didn't follow his direction on this was a Nazi appeaser, if you remember it during his 21-hour uh, approach, anyone who didn't get it, that any Republican who didn't take his tactic, they've all voted to abolish Obamacare, but if you didn't take his tactic, you owned Obamacare, okay? Ted Cruz hurled invective and nasty stuff at every single Republican who had a track record longer than Ted Cruz's of opposing Obamacare and voting against it. Ted Cruz just showed up here, okay? The other Republicans actually fought against Obamacare as congressmen and senators. Ted questioned their commitment to, um, they were rhinos if they didn't like his tactic, okay? And he tried to take a tactic and argue it was a principle. It wasn't. It wasn't a very good tactic right. either. I want to, I'm so not he trying doesn't to... have any standing to ask why someone might be disappointed in him. No one's questioning his conservative credentials. It's his wisdom and his judgment and the name-calling that he has thrown at every Republican in the House and the Senate. And what you just suggested as an approach, force the Democrats to vote on all these difficult votes. Ted Cruz and everyone on his team announced that those sorts of votes were no stinking good, and anyone who pushed for them was no stinking good. It is now the strategy, because people have walked away from the non-strategy that Ted Cruz put together. But the name-calling that Ted Cruz and his people did of all the other Republicans. But didn't John McCain the start the name calling? Didn't John McCain, call him a, didn't John McCain call him a wingnut long before this? Didn't he get called names way before he called names? Oh, yeah. So I, I, I'm not going to defend John McCain's arguments with him. No, we got, we got my, 30 seconds. My point got, is, yeah. this, was not, this was not a one-on-one thing. I got you. He was going over and over again, questioning right. people's commitment to abolishing... Obamacare. That was not true. I appreciate it. I'm sorry we had such a short time. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. Steve Malsberg here on the uh, Steve Malsberg Show. That was Grover Norquist, President of Americans for Tax Reform, Newsmax TV, and Radio. The Steve Malsberg Show. Are you worried about not having enough money to retire? Finally, there's a retirement solution designed to address the damage that the government spending policies and the Federal Reserve have inflicted on the value of the dollar. Introducing the Heritage Advantage IRA, the new gold and silver-backed retirement account from Heritage Gold Group. Don't let the declining value of the dollar put your retirement in jeopardy. The Heritage Advantage IRA puts retirement savers back in control with physical gold and silver combined with the tax advantages of an IRA. Call 855-GOLD-IRA to request your free, no-obligation Heritage Advantage IRA kit. Inside, you'll find information about how to buy physical gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. No additional investment required. Call 855-GOLD-IRA for your free Advantage IRA kit. Don't wait. Plans for new regulations may eliminate rules allowing you to buy gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. Call 855-GOLD-IRA. That's 855-465-3472. Do you have a motorized wheelchair or scooter that needs repairs and you don't know where to turn? Then call the experts at Precision Repair Network. They are the specialists in repairing all makes and models of motorized wheelchairs and scooters. You can call 24-7 and they will come to you anywhere in the United States. They'll give you a loaner to use until they return yours in perfect condition. And your repairs may be covered by your Medicare or your private insurance, so there is little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. If your wheelchair or scooter needs repairs, call this special hotline now and learn how you can get door-to-door service on your repairs at little or no cost to you. Precision Repair Network. They'll get you moving again. 
Operators are ready to take your call right now. 800-978-4813. 800-978-4813. 800-978-4813. That's 800-978-4813. Hello and welcome to your Newsmax Now update. I'm John Bachman. There's no firm deal yet, but Republican lawmakers and President Obama are moving ahead with talks now about a plan to reopen the government. Details are limited, but there's also a potential deal in the works that could increase the debt limit in exchange for spending cuts. President Obama met with Senate Republicans today. Congressional staffers also worked late into last night looking at a House plan to raise the nation's borrowing limit. Democrats in the White House say any deal to end the government shutdown also needs to raise the debt limit as well. But Republicans, including House Speaker John Boehner and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, say they still want to get something in return for striking a deal. Members on both sides of the aisle here in Congress are discussing solutions, and these discussions will continue. Now, some Republicans admit the party was forced to soften its stance because their approval ratings have hit an all-time low. Now, if a deal does get hammered out today, the government could be back open as soon as this weekend. Also, President Obama has signed a bill that will restore benefits for the families of service members killed during this government shutdown. The government typically pays out $100,000 within three days of a service member's death. However, because of the shutdown, the Pentagon said it was legally barred from paying that benefit while the government was closed. This law frees up that money while the shutdown continues. And a chemical weapons watchdog has won the Nobel Peace Prize for 2013. Judges in Norway awarded this year's Nobel Peace Prize to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW. Experts from OPCW are now overseeing the destruction of Syria's chemical weapons arsenal. The Netherlands-based group has the support of the UN and aims to shut down Syria's production of chemical weapons and all those facilities within a few weeks. Well, from the Peace Prize to more violence in the Middle East, a car bomb has exploded outside the Swedish consulate in the eastern Libyan city of Benghazi today. It damaged the building's front and some houses nearby, but fortunately there were no casualties immediately reported. This bomb does come just one day after Libya's prime minister, Ali Zidane, was briefly abducted by a group of former rebels. Nobody has claimed responsibility for the bombing attack, which also took place just a few days after U.S. Special Forces captured a Libyan al-Qaeda suspect in Tripoli. And a Medal of Honor recipient gets a hero's send-off in New Jersey. Sergeant Nicholas Oresco was awarded the Medal of Honor by then-President Harry Truman for his heroic actions during the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. Now, in the final stages of that pivotal battle, Sergeant Oresco took out two Nazi machine gun positions and 12 enemy fighters while being badly wounded himself. That was 68 years ago. He lived to be 94 years old. Good for him there. And coming up next on our Newsmax Now update, a Newsmax exclusive with former National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski. Plus, the East Coast is bracing for a wet weekend, another nor'easter, what those folks can expect. Attention hip implant patients. Are you in constant pain? Have you received a letter from your doctor about your implant? Have you had or need a revision surgery? Do you have high levels of metal, chromium, or cobalt in your blood? Over 90,000 hip implant devices have been recalled due to defects and failures resulting in revision or replacement surgery. If you have a recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920 to see if your implant is affected by the recalls. If you or a loved one has a defective or recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920. That's 800-460-0920. Protect your legal rights today. Call 800-460-0920. This is an advertisement not valid in all states. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. iLawsuit.com is an advertising group that represents lawyers advertising their services and is a free matching service for consumers. It is not a law firm or lawyer referral service. Wow, you look great. Thanks. I've lost some weight. <laughs> What's your secret weapon? Actually, I do, in fact, have one. Really? If you're looking for help in your weight loss efforts, remember this name, Metabio. It just may be the edge you've been looking for. Metabio is the nutritional weight loss breakthrough power-packed with five high-quality ingredients. Metabio supports healthy metabolism and promotes fat loss. 
It helps maintain your optimal weight and wellness when used as part of a healthy lifestyle. Now you can receive a 30-day supply of Metabio. Simply cover a $4.95 shipping fee. Visit thematabio.com slash offer for complete details. Act now and you'll also be given instant access to our downloadable special report, A Practical Guide to Healthy Weight Management. Learn how you can try Metabio for 30 days at thematabio.com slash offer. That's the M-E-T-A-B-I-O dot com slash offer. Hurry only while supplies last at thematabio.com slash offer. And welcome back, folks. In the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast are bracing for a wet weekend. And Nor'easter has been bringing lots of rain and has pushed tidal waters back into rivers and estuaries, leading to the high potential of flooding in some parts of New Jersey and Maryland. Some of the areas are bracing for the storm. We're also affected by Superstorm Sandy last year, so hopefully this will not be as bad. And so with Democrats and Republicans apparently getting closer to some sort of deal, what has this shutdown and the risk of U.S. default meant to our credibility from a foreign policy standpoint? We asked that question to Zivyev Brzezinski, who served as the National Security Advisor to President Jimmy Carter. It's creating increasing uncertainty about the United States. And the loss of confidence in the United States is itself damaging to the United States. For the latest information about a possible solution to this government shutdown, of course, stay with Newsmax TV and Newsmax.com. I'm John Bachman. Today is October 10th. Now back to New York and the Steve Malzberg Show. Take care. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling 855-777-9660. That's 855-777-9660. Or email Steve at malzbergshow at newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. All right, ladies. Gentlemen, it is uh, hour number three, the final hour of the week, the Friday edition of the Steve Malsberg Show, and um, 855-777-9660, In just a few minutes, we'll be joined by Christopher Parker. Uh, we spoke to him several months ago, political professor at University of Washington and author of Change They Can't Believe In, which uh, basically uh, accuses the Tea Party of uh, being driven by racism and and homophobia and xenophobia and you name it and of course uh, you know hatred for obama because he's black which would fall under racism i do suppose and noel shepherd uh, editor associate editor of newsbusters.org will join us as well now earlier in the show uh, i talked about these polls this this nbc news wall street journal poll which is nonsense Okay, it's nonsense because of the 800 and some odd people they spoke to. 20% of them are either, government, are either government employees or have family members who are government employees. It's skewed way heavily on the Democratic side compared to Republicans. Um, and still in all, they ask a question, and that question is, they ask a lot of questions. And, and the results are not good for the Republicans in any of them, really. Uh, but they ask, um, who do you blame for the government shutdown? And they give you choices. Barack Obama, the, the Republicans in the House, both are not sure. They don't give you the option to blame how the Democrats in the in the Congress. And based on that and, and some other questions, oh, this is why the Republicans are caving, that these polls are really bad for them. It's awful for them. Meanwhile, we had a poll two days ago, AP. Obama's approval rating was 37%. And today, reading the um, AP story on the latest AP GFK poll, a bad sign for Democrats. A bad sign for Democrats? But how could that be? Not if you watch uh, CNN and the rest of them. Only bad signs for Republicans. So anyway, a bad sign for the Democrats, it says here in the AP story is that Obama has bled support among independents. Folks, folks, understand this. 60% of independents disapprove of the way Obama's handling his job. You know what his approval rating among independents is? No, not 40. No, they don't need to say approve or disapprove. Some of them don't know. You know what his approval rating is? 16% among independents. Now, to, to put that in some context, in January, Obama had a 48% approval rating. 
with independence. 32% drop. But shh, don't tell that to CNN or MSNBC or the New York Times or the Washington Post. Shh, shh. Republicans, bad. Polls, bad. Disaster. Party blow up. I mean, it's, it's so sad. Anyway, I, I bring that to you because I want to play two quick sound bites. Uh, a student at the University of Colorado went around with a, a chart. Who do you blame for what's going on in Washington, Obama or the Republicans? And I want you to hear, listen to some of this. Cut 22. Who do you think shut down the government? I think it was Obama. So who do you think uh, shut down the government? Uh, I'd have to say Obama. University of Colorado, you're saying President Obama? I am saying President Obama. Who do you blame for the government shutdown? I'd have to go with probably the Democrats. Who do you blame for the government shutdown? Obama. Blame Obama? Nice. Tally it up. Why do you blame Obama for the government shutdown? Because Obamacare is stupid. Why do you think Obamacare is dumb? Because you shouldn't be required to have health care. Off with the individual mandate. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. We're asking students at the University of Colorado, who do you blame for the government shutdown? Democrats. At the University of Colorado, it is unanimous so far. Wow. Either Democrats or or Obama. I think in the next bite, we do have at least one Republican. Here's uh, cut 23. I blame both parties. Okay. Why is that? Because they can't agree on anything. If they, like, I know preschoolers who get along better than the Democrats and the Republicans. So you blame the Republicans. Who do you blame for the government shutdown? Obama. <laughs> I blame the Democrats. Blame the Democrats? And Obamacare. The government has been shut down for a week. Who do you blame for the government shutdown? Obama. You do? Obama. At the University of Colorado. At the University of Colorado. It's Obama's fault. Who do you believe is responsible for the government shutdown? Who do I believe? Um... Obama, for sure. You blame Obama? Yeah, definitely. All right, well, the girl who said, um, she was twirling a uh, hula hoop, wearing shorts and standing on a skateboard. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Anyway, all right, folks, when we come back, we're going to be joined by Chris Parker, and we're going to talk about the Tea Party right here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Don't go away. Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Malsberg Show. Attention seniors and baby boomers. A new website has been created just for you. SocialSecurity311.com. At SocialSecurity311.com, we reveal a weird trick that could help you add $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. For example, did you know how you file for Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect? One simple step could add up to $1,000 to your monthly payouts. And other loopholes we found reveal 33 ways for big savings on your health care. At SocialSecurity311.com, you will also discover how you could save up to 50% on your groceries, along with 49 other ways to save as much as $50,000 starting today. Newsmax says this website is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to SocialSecurity311.com now to find out how you could add extra money to your Social Security checks. That's SocialSecurity311.com. SocialSecurity311.com. Newsmax Magazine is proud to present a special tribute to our 40th president, Ronald Reagan. It's a very special documentary and commemorative issue of Newsmax Magazine celebrating the centennial of President Reagan's birth. First, here's a video clip from the award-winning documentary, Rendezvous with Destiny. We're in the midst of a springtime of hope for America. You ain't seen nothing yet. Impulses of an evil empire. Tear down this wall. I believe that together we can keep this rendezvous with destiny. In the next several minutes, you will learn things about President Ronald Reagan that you've never seen, heard, or read before. Welcome to today's special Newsmax event celebrating the life and legacy of President Reagan. During this historic presentation, we will commemorate President Reagan's storied life. We'll revisit his two terms in office and recollect his proudest achievements and greatest challenges. Ronald Reagan's life reads like a fairy tale of success stories. He was an accomplished athlete, 
an honored veteran, a famous actor, the governor of California, and of course, our nation's 40th president. He called himself a citizen politician and only entered politics when he warned government was gaining too much power. By then he was age 54 with a successful career behind him. Twice elected president of the United States, Ronald Wilson Reagan was a contradiction to some, once a Democrat, then a Republican, a champion of smaller government whose own government grew, a fiscal conservative who failed to balance the budget. His critics mistook his affability for weakness, but behind the smile and the charm existed an extraordinary leader with unique skills and bold and revolutionary ideas. We only had time to share just a few of the top defining moments in Ronald Reagan's presidency, but you'll get to see them all in Rendezvous with Destiny. By the way, the president's close relationship with the Pope is especially fascinating. You'll also learn how dealing with an alcoholic father helped shape Reagan's ability to negotiate. And if you ever wondered what the leader of the free world likes to get for the holidays, well, you'll find that out as well. So today, in this free offer, we are sending you a copy of Ronald Reagan, Rendezvous with Destiny, and the collector's limited edition of our issue commemorating the 100th anniversary of President Reagan's birth. Right now, when you subscribe to Newsmax Magazine, you can own both the DVD and receive the special Reagan 100th birthday commemorative edition. That's $25 in bonus gifts when you subscribe. Go to Newsmax.com backslash Reagan 13 to subscribe today. Join the millions who read Newsmax Magazine every month. Sure, Steve might be a bit of a hypochondriac, but he never gets sick of breaking news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. Call Steve at 1-855-777-9660. That's 1-855-777-9660. Here's Steve. Let's, let's be very honest about what this is about. Mm -hmm. It's not about bashing Democrats. It's not about yeah. taxes. They have no idea what the Boston Tea Party was about. That's right. They don't know their history at all. This is about hating a black man in the White House. This is racism straight up. That is nothing but a bunch of tea-banging rednecks. And, they, and, they, and there is no way around that. And, you know, you can tell these type of right-wingers anything and they'll believe it mm -hmm. except the truth. You That's tell them right. the truth and they become, it's like showing Frankenstein's monster fire. They become confused and angry and, and highly volatile. Mm -hmm. That guy causing them right. feelings they don't know because their limbic brain, we've discussed this mm -hmm. before, the limbic brain inside a right winger or a Republican or conservative or, or your average white power activist, the limbic brain is much larger in, in, their, in their head space than in a reasonable person and it's pushing against the frontal lobe. All right, folks, there you go. There's, uh, 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 I don't know what you want to call that. That's an oldie but goodie, I guess, or an oldie but sicky. Janine Garofalo talking about the Tea Party, um, I don't know, about a year ago or so on MSNBC. Joining us uh, now is a man who we have spoken to before, uh, Christopher Parker, political science professor at University of Washington and author of Change They Can't Believe In, um, a book about the Tea Party. Hello, sir. How are you? Good to talk to you again. Hey, good to be back, Steve. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. Okay. Um, all right. So, do you do you agree with what you heard from Janine Garofalo there? N n not all of it. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. What, which part do you agree with? I, I I don't think I don't think the antipathy towards Obama is all about race at all. It's 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 much bigger. It's much bigger than that. And I would never make any. I'm not a neuropsychologist or psychobiologist or whatever. I can't make any claims about the you know relative size of you know the limbic. I, I can't. I'm not going to make any claims like that because I'm a qualified. <laughs> so, all right, all right, but but you you do. I mean, accuse the Tea Party of being racist, sexist, xenophobic, homophobic, <laughs> anti-Obama. Do you not? I do. All right. Well, okay. So uh, so based on based on what? Well, based on based on uh, based on social science, uh, Steve, we uh, conducted uh, two surveys, and we also did uh, uh, what's called a content analysis, in which we compared the content of the Tea Party, 42 Tea Party websites in 15 states, to the content of the National Review Online, and it's, it's, there are really stark differences between the two. 
So, so, but, but let me, but let me say this. Let me say this. Well, wait, wait, you can't gloss over. Wait, you can't gloss over no, no, if that's no, no, your no, evidence no. that they're sexist and homophobic and racist and uh, and you say you, you compared some study com- websites to National Review and then you want to change the subject. No, I'm not. I know I'm not trying to change All the right. subject. All uh, right. Let me. Can, can will you let me elaborate? Yeah, sure, please? sure. Thank you. Um, I, I would never say as a categorical assertion that all Tea Partiers or or racist or sexist or home. I would never say that's that. That's awfully big of you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I would say, however, probabilistically they are. Really. Do, do, do I need to break that down to you and your audience? With what the so word probabilistic prob- probabilistically, that? which or or, yeah. or no, you no. I just think it's amazing. I I, I think I think this is um, uh, you have absolutely no evidence. Uh, you don't know Tea Partiers. Uh, you you don't you don't know who I, they are. Are you are? sure I don't? Are you sure I don't know any Tea Partiers, Steve? And they and they're racist and sexist. On, and on what on what basis do you make that assumption? Uh, probably on the same basis you make your assumptions. Nothing. <laughs> How's well, that? Okay, well, Steve, is that is 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 that why my stuff has been all over the Washington Post? Your stuff York has Times? been all over the Washington Post and the New York Times because they're liberal trash rags. <laughs> they're biased as could be. They're they're full okay. of trash. You know you okay. know that you know. Have you been watching the news? Have you been watching the um, the celebration of the media by this NBC News Wall Street Journal poll? The one that says, "Who do you blame for the uh, government shutdown and the problems we have?" And the choices are. Barack Obama, Republicans in, in Congress, both or don't know. Uh, hey, they left out the Democrats in Congress, but that's okay. That's typical of the media. I mean, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Steve, okay, Steve. No, I uh, love you. You're, you're, you're bragging that your 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 assumptions of racism and xenophobia and homophobia and God knows what other phobia that we haven't even made up yet. Uh, putting that on the Tea Party uh, because the Washington Post and the New York Times tout it doesn't do it for me. I'm sorry. Where's okay, your well, evidence? Okay. I want to hear your okay, evidence. Okay. Well, I just, I, I just, I, I just, I just told you. Oh, no, I you brushed you. over I mean, that. You I'm brushed over that. Mon- computer monitor right now, Steve. You're kind of handsome, man. Not as handsome as me. But uh, wait, wait. I don't. I, I, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I, you know. Uh, anyway. Um, okay. Oh, so you want? Okay, you want? Okay, you want to hear? You want to hear my evidence? I, 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 I kind of would go. like to hear the evidence. I mean, sure. you know, it kind of might be important. Okay. Okay. I'll, okay. Okay. I'll do that. So let's talk about. Let's talk about undocumented. Oh, let's. Okay. Let's talk about. And so let's talk about Obama. And so the Tea Party claims just to be conservative, right? Is that, is that, is that what the claim is? The Tea Regular Party? Mainstream conservatives? Is that, is that what the claim is? I mean, I, I, you mean the Tea Party or, you know, the Tea Party is almost a misnomer because there were Tea Party groups all over the country. I don't know if they have a credo, a national credo, and I don't know if you talk to, just like if you say I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. Well, does that mean they all believe the same thing? So in answer to your question, I don't know. I can't answer okay, that. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. Tea Party supporters, people who identify with the Tea Party. Yeah. Well, I, they're better? they're on the. They certainly aren't liberals. So uh, they go the other way. I would say yes. They're conservative, oh, okay, okay, which so is they, also okay. a broad a broad okay, title. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. But Steve, they classify themselves as conservative. Yes or no? I, I would say fair yes enough. No. Fair enough. Yes, fair enough. Thank you, Not thank all you, of them, but you. I don't know. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay, Steve. Okay. So 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 here's one statistic. Okay, so when we look at all conservatives and we disaggregate them between Tea Party conservatives and non-Tea Party conservatives, 78% of Tea Party conservatives want to see Obama's policies fail versus 36% of non-Tea Party conservatives. That's a pretty big gap, isn't it? And what does that mean, though? That means that that means that there are stark differences between people who call themselves Tea Party conservatives and non-Tea Party okay, conservatives. Okay, but what does, that, what does that mean? Where does xenophobic, homophobic, what does it mean? Oh, you know, you know what that means. That 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 means that means that there is a stark difference between conservatives. Oh, but that, oh, but I asked you for evidence of your claims of racism, sexism, oh, oh, xenophobia, okay, okay, homophobia, okay. Oh, you wanna, oh, you and you're wanna, telling okay, me there oh, are differences wanna, between wanna, Tea Partiers wanna, okay, and okay, non-Tea wanna, Partiers. <laughs> you were going to present the evidence. So where is it? Oh, I'm, I, I'm just. These are re- okay. Here, okay, all right. So President President Obama. Okay. No, no. We're yeah, not ta- yes. I'm a, Go ahead. Okay, 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 but okay, but okay, but, okay, but, wait, but wait a second. So we want to talk about let's talk about homophobia. Can we can we do that? Well, you wait, 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 so what were you trying to prove right now when when I asked you for the evidence and you said okay, and then you brought up this cockamamie? There's differences cockamamie. between two. Be, wait, wait, wait. Hey, differences, really? differences like between differences between conservatives and Tea Partiers. What was that supposed to mean? 
Well, it was supposed to mean, Steve, that the hypothesis is that all conservatives, you know, Tea Party conservatives can claim to be conservatives, right? Tea Party is claiming to be conservatives. All right. right? So that, so that, therefore, there shouldn't be any tangible differences on anything between Tea Party conservatives and non-Tea Party really? conservatives. Really? So you're right? telling me every liberal you know is the same? Is uh, that what you're telling me? They all believe the same things. Every Democrat is the same. Well, no, no. The question, we're talking about Tea Partiers, right? Well, but, but, but Tea Partiers, the, the people might call themselves Tea Partiers and have different beliefs, not believe everything the same. You're saying that because you join a group— you're all like-minded on every every issue. No, 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 no. no. What I'm saying is, is they classify themselves as conservatives, and all conservatives should be more or less the same. Not exactly the same, Steve. I would never make that claim about anyone or any. All right. Group. So I let, let me let me let me. Since you won't say it, you're <laughs> presenting that to show that by rooting for Obama's policies to fail um, at a much higher rate than general the general conservative population they're racist and i would argue that that is such nonsense you could i mean they're, they're rooting for what many of them consider to be and many americans consider to be i'd say many of the tea parties consider to be socialist slash marxist dangerous but you laugh dangerous <laughs> policies for this country and can, rather can than say even, i can, hope can, he succeeds they say i hope he fails so and you say ah racist Get, that's your evidence that's okay, your wait evidence a second, wait a second wait a second wait a second steve we can all we can also break it down to how many people how many the differences between people who support the tea party and, and conservatives and not who believe obama is is Country and and uh, let me wait, let me see if I can find this, Steve, because I think this is so funny. I have such a good time with you. Oh, here we go, Steve. Let's check this one out. Okay, Obama is a practicing Christian. Forty-two percent of non-Tea Party conservatives believe that to be true, but twenty-five percent of Tea Party conservatives believe. And that. what's the overall population believe? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna let me let me because this right there's now. a these significant are, these, 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 number these, these, of the overall population that doesn't believe it either. I mean, but you're giving me such an ancillary nonsense. Again, I've asked you, where's your proof? And you're giving me these, oh, do you know this interesting fact? And that leads to racism. Give me a break. Okay, 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 Steve. Okay, let me, okay, okay. Here, here, here's. We here's only got like a, like, like a minute and a half, so give me a homophobe thing, a xenophobe thing. Give me a strongest case for throwing a letter on the chest of the Tea Party. Go. Okay, 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 okay. I'll give you the strongest thing. Okay, so we asked a question about whether or not Barack Obama is destroying the country, right? So all conservatives should think more or less the same. Over. No, you see, you, no. You, you, that's a bigoted response. What do you mean all conservatives should think the same? What is that? Should all blacks? Should all Republicans? Should all Democrats? No group is well, monolithic. Okay, but I don't me, understand Steve, your premise. Let me tell you the difference. But Steve, hold up, hold up, hold up, sir. Let me tell you what the differences are. 71% of Tea Party conservatives believe he's trying to destroy the country versus only 6% of non-Tea Party conservatives. How do you explain that gap, Steve? So what is, but racism? That's what you would leap to? Or homophobia? Maybe they think he's gay. Or or xenophobia because they think he's born in Kenya. Wow. I mean, I, look, I got to tell you, I love talking to you. We'll do it again. But I, I just I wish you had something like a fact that would make me say, wow, it's not there. Chris Parker, uh, the book is uh, is uh, the, the Tea Party. Uh, I'll tell you the book when we come back. Steve Malzberg show. Thanks, Chris. The Steve Malzberg show. Are you worried about not having enough money to retire? Finally, there's a retirement solution designed to address the damage that the government spending policies and the Federal Reserve have inflicted on the value of the dollar. Introducing the Heritage Advantage IRA, the new gold and silver-backed retirement account from Heritage Gold Group. Don't let the declining value of the dollar put your retirement in jeopardy. The Heritage Advantage IRA puts retirement savers back in control with physical gold and silver combined with the tax advantages of an IRA. Call 855-GOLD IRA to request your free no obligation Heritage Advantage IRA kit. Inside, you'll find information about how to buy physical gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. No additional investment required. Call 855 Gold IRA for your free Advantage IRA kit. Don't wait. Plans for new regulations may eliminate rules allowing you to buy gold and silver with your existing IRA or 401k. Call 855 Gold IRA. That's 855 465 3472. 
Attention seniors and baby boomers. A new website has been created just for you. SocialSecurity311.com. At SocialSecurity311.com, we reveal a weird trick that could help you add $152,000 to your Social Security payouts. For example, did you know how you file for Social Security can dramatically change the amount of money you collect? One simple step could add up to $1,000 to your monthly payouts. And other loopholes we found reveal 33 ways for big savings on your health care. At SocialSecurity311.com, you will also discover how you could save up to 50% on your groceries, along with 49 other ways to save as much as $50,000 starting today. Newsmax says this website is a critical resource for anyone over the age of 50. So go to SocialSecurity311.com now to find out how you could add extra money to your Social Security checks. That's SocialSecurity311.com. SocialSecurity311.com. 150 million people suffer from headaches. All you want is for the pounding in your head to stop. Migralex stops the pounding. Migralex was developed by a neurologist and founder of the New York Headache Center. I am neurologist Dr. Alex Mauskopf. After studying and researching the human brain for 25 years, I've developed Migralex, which eliminates pounding headaches. It works for my patients, and I'm so convinced it will work for you. I don't just guarantee it. I put my name on it. Dr. Mauskopf's Migralex gets rid of headaches fast without harsh caffeine, sodium, or preservatives. Migralex works unbelievably fast. And it's gentle on my stomach. Find out how to get your free bottle of Migralex. Call 800-532-2967. Plus, if you're one of the first 100 callers, you'll also receive the Migralex Quick Tips to Headache Relief absolutely free. That's 800-532-2967. Or go to MigralexRelief.com. M-I-G-R-A-L-E-X Relief.com. Or call 800-532-2967. Here's today's silver shortage update from Lear Capital. Reports keep coming, the shortage is growing. Twice already this year, the U.S. Mint has run out. Last time this happened, the silver price jumped 40%. It's time to take advantage with this special offer from Lear Capital. For a limited time, buy 20 new silver polar bear coins and get one free. The only 1.5 ounce coin on the market. It's minted with the finest silver, carries a government guarantee, and is eligible for IRAs. The Silver Polar Bear is available exclusively from Lear Capital. But don't wait. Silver supplies are shrinking and availability is not guaranteed. This offer is limited to a minimum purchase of $5,000. Call right now. 800-634-0482. 800-634-0482. Call Lear Capital now. 800-634-0482. This is not your typical Scream Fest talk show. No. No. This is the next generation of talk radio. Here is Steve Malzberg. The other thing that they can't na give you a figure on how many people have actually right. now signed up, I just don't buy. I mean, I just don't believe that, um, I, you know, because, and, and they're, t you know, what they're, what they're promoting is, well, we had all these unique visitors, we had an overwhelming number of people actually looking, but actually signing up, actually creating accounts, the fact they're not able to give numbers to me, I just, I just don't buy that they don't have those numbers. All right. Wow. Shocking stuff. Welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show, ladies and gentlemen. And joining us uh, right now is our friend Noel Shepard, uh, associate editor of Newsbusters.org. And Noel, uh, my voice, which has been questionable for the last four weeks, I just had a, a little interview with uh, Chris Parker. Um, he of the, um, and I promised I'd, I'd say the book one more time because I couldn't get it in at the end, uh, Change They Can't Believe In, uh, The Tea Party and Reactionary Politics in America. So whatever voice I had is, uh, has been severely weakened. But how are you? Good. You sound just fine. No, oh, well, I appreciate that. All right. So that was uh, Anderson Cooper on CNN, yeah. Um, yeah. and and you, as you wrote about it, newsbusters.org. Um, he doesn't buy this uh, this fact that uh, the uh, the administration can't give us a number of how many people have actually signed up for Obamacare. That was quite shocking. It was quite shocking, and you know, it, it's interesting. You have to wonder. And I was discussing this with Ann Coulter this morning. The, the media what a are name showing... dropper what a name dropper no i, I know Gee whiz. Yeah. well you know <laughs> anyway go ahead <laughs> i know 
you have you have to do it. But anyway, what's what's interesting here is is the media are a lot more skeptical about the Obamacare rollout than I think any of us would have anticipated. And you have to ask yourself, why is that? Is it because they knew that the conservative media, the Fox News, that the, you know, the, the blogosphere, newsbusters, et cetera, uh, were, were, were going to be on top of it so they didn't want to be behind the eight ball on this? Or is it because it's such an extraordinary disaster that even though one of their own is involved in the disaster, they can't ignore it? I'm not sure what the answer is. Actually, you know, Coulter's thought was that, that it's also possible that they're going to be impacted by Obamacare and they're watching this train wreck happen and they're wondering if it's going to have a negative impact on them. Because th the more we see of this, you know, Nancy Pelosi had said we won't really know what's in it until after we pass it. Boy, we have no idea how right she was. It, it appears that conceivably everybody is going to be impacted by this somehow. I'm sure you've been reading the articles about people and seeing things even on TV uh, about people receiving letters from their insurance company saying that your insurance has been dropped because it doesn't qualify under Obamacare. No, and right. I, but, but allow me to interrupt for just one second, only because I, I, I think I have insight into this. The people who work at the networks like CNN, MSNBC, Anderson Cooper, they I believe they have to be uh, members of AFTRA SAG. And uh, I, I just I, I, I had been for 20 some odd years. I'm not no longer, but I'm still on their mailing list. So I just got the booklet. And all it's going to be is like a thirty dollar premium increase starting in 2014. So they're probably <laughs> unaffected at this point. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that's well. I mean, thirty dollars is thirty dollars. Oh yeah, but yeah, but yeah. But fair, not, fair point for her to wonder and you to wonder. Yeah, but I just happened to, to, to be have lived in that world, so I could yeah, I could no, tell you. Yeah. That's interesting. So yeah. that union is not going to be as impacted as other unions. Yeah. But doesn't that also suggest though that that the SAG AFTRA uh, uh, union is not providing what we would consider to be a Cadillac plan? I don't know. All I could tell you is my plan as an individual uh, had like a, I think if it's not Cadillac, it, 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 I don't know what it is. It, it had like a $250 deductible. You didn't need any permission to go to any doctor. You got 80% reimbursement in, in, in house, you know, in plan and 60% out of plan. And I mean, it was just, it was, it was just great. Yeah, that, but that's not Cadillac. Oh, okay. It's Cadillac would Cadillac would be approaching more of 100% coverage. Okay, okay. But anyway, anyway, yeah. Uh, so, so we'll scratch that and we'll say no. Then, then either it's because they were concerned that the conservative media was going to be ahead of this and they were going to look foolish again, or that it's just such an amazing train wreck that they've got to cover it. And and it, you know to see someone like Anderson, and it wasn't just Anderson, and I'm not sure what clips you want to play. No, no, I got this. I'm got right now. Cut forty. Let's go to cut forty. First of all, uh, you did you did a story on the uh, on the Dallas guy who CBS. You you did a story on the fact that CBS News did a, a story on this guy in Dallas who couldn't sign up. And then the next morning or the next day, uh, CBS this morning on Wednesday, they ran this. Here's cut forty. How many folks got uh, signed up on the Obamacare? You got it right with you? On, are you okay? Good. In the past week, the president's signature achievement has become the butt of late night jokes. Some good news apparently, Obamacare does cover carpal tunnel syndrome, the result of pressing a computer trying to get through to stupid uh, Obamacare. <laughs> No one knows how many people have managed to enroll. The administration refuses to release those numbers. But the website's launch has been nothing short of disastrous. Media outlets have struggled to find anyone who's actually been successful. The Washington Post even illustrated that sought-after person as a unicorn. And that was Jan Crawford on, uh, on CBS, so kudos to them, too. Kudos to them. I mean, back-to-back, -back, you know, morning and evening uh, t discussing, and I think it was, I think it was either that one or the, or the one subsequent, uh, I think it was the evening one that night that was talking about how they, they actually, or might've been Jan interviewed a, uh, a, a, not a consultant, but an owner of a data, of, of a database software company who basically said that it appears that, that the, the, the website healthcare.gov wasn't even tested. Or he was suggesting that it that it seems to him that it couldn't possibly have been tested that this thing wasn't even ready for a beta test. Yeah, it yet. was it was in the same report, I believe, uh, an Asian uh, a gentleman uh, who said that. Yeah. yeah, and he was outraged, and he said it was a, a total, total, totally 
incompetent, flop, the whole thing. No, and and imagine from his perspective, and they didn't discuss it with him, but I think it was the following day we found out that we taxpayers spent $640 million on this, which was more than the software cost for Facebook, more than it cost for for Twitter, more than it cost for um, uh, Instagram and and, and another website. I mean, this is a, a staggering amount of money for a website that clearly at this point it's it's it, it, the, the 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 consultant was right or the visit the, the 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 software company owner was right this isn't even ready for a beta test let along let along actually opening it up to the public this it's, it's it, this is worse than a train wreck you know and we, we like to say train wreck to me this is a plane crash I mean, yeah. it, it's just that bad yeah no it really really is all right let's move on to something um uh, that you wrote about also uh, uh, earlier in the week on uh, newsbusters.org. We're talking to Noel Shepard, associate editor of newsbusters.org. And this was from um, reliable sources, Frank Sesno, who used to be a, a fixture on CNN, uh, who now was uh, uh, at George Washington University School of Media and Public Affairs. He gathered a bunch of his uh, students or students from that, uh, that school and, um, and put this to them. Here's cut 41. You want to be journalists. You're in Washington. You're in the Washington at a time when the government is shut down. It's the biggest story we've had in a long, long time. Where are you getting your news from? Twitter. No. I mean, I mean, <laughs> following, you know, following reporters or the actual media outlet. Before I get out of bed every morning, I'm always on Twitter. So Twitter, Facebook, I follow CNN, I follow uh, New York Times, I follow Washington Post, basically everyone. I turn to Washington Post a lot, and also I watch the rundown on CBS this morning uh, on their website. I first go to Twitter, um, and then when I'm at, I always go to the gym in the morning, and I'm always watching uh, Morning Joe, the Daily Rundown. Oh boy, uh, what a surprise, huh? And and not one. And, and there were there was another bite I had that I played earlier in the week, but uh, uh, that then it turned to John Stewart uh, as a source of news, but not one quote-unquote conservative a- a- outlet or even one that's considered conservative, nothing. Nothing. And what's interesting is I, I actually got a, uh, a tweet from one of the people that was involved in that segment, one of the students, and he said, and he wanted to remain anonymous, that he had mentioned that he also reads National Review online. Oh, they took it out? They took it out. Wow. Now, but he, he said that he, he, he said he, he doesn't like like National Review, he just he, he just reads it, uh, uh, you know, to get a a different perspective. But for some reason, CNN decided not to air that. The whole segment, to me, I don't understand why CNN did that and why Frank says no did that. I mean, I understand him sitting down and talking with journalists or with 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 J schoolers, but when they're basically all saying that they're getting their information exclusively from little sources, it's kind of reinforcing yeah. the obvious, right? And including, including he brings up the John Stewart thing, and they say, oh, yeah, we all watch that. And one of them said, I don't really get my news there. But, but I don't know why Cessno aired that, because it basically proved what we've been saying on the right for years. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, it reinforces uh, uh, the, the point that, that has been made. And, on, and it's on a show like Reliable Sources which, you know, is kind of a you know, cr- critique of the media. So he's right. kind of self-indicting uh, the media, if you will, and as host uh, by, by, by showing these kids who have nothing but, uh, according to what they showed, have nothing but liberal influences. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you something that I haven't disclosed to anybody. Oh, good, good, a scoop, a scoop. A scoop, a scoop. I actually got an email from someone who wanted to remain anonymous, didn't want to go on the record. Yeah. Is going to a J school in in uh, the University of Oregon. A J school is a journalism school. Journalism school, yeah. University of Oregon, and he said that every day his teachers do nothing but bash Fox News, nothing but bash uh, Republicans, conservatives, and the Tea Party, and nothing but praise MSNBC and <laughs> the, the, yeah. Now, unfortunately, he didn't want to go on the record, but he said he said, Mr. Shepard, it's every day that we're being bombarded with Fox News is terrible, conservatives are terrible, George W. Bush was terrible, the Tea Party are terrible, Wow! but MSNBC is wonderful, and this is out of journalism school. And, and these kids would be <clears throat> terrified, especially if they're specializing in their field of, uh, of, of uh, you know, endeavor here, um, to, 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 to fight back, to criticize the, the professor, right. to, 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 to take on the professor. 
That's right. He sent me a subsequent because I asked him, I said, would you like to do an interview on this? And he said, no, I, would be, I can't do that. But I'm taking notes. I'm, I'm taking audio. Good, and good. So once, I go, once I get out of school, write I, a plan book, on, baby. I, I plan on exposing this. Yeah, oh, that's great. That is, that is really great. We're talking to Noel Shepard, newsbusters.org <clears throat> here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Okay, Tavis Smiley. Uh, very yeah. interesting exchange uh, on Hannity yeah. uh, last night. Uh, yeah. I want folks to hear um, what uh, what Smiley said uh, about uh, about Barack Obama and and African Americans. And here's cut thirty eight. Data is going to indicate, sadly, <clears throat> that when the Obama administration is over, black people will have lost ground in every single leading economic indicator category. That's that's pretty big stuff. It's big stuff. Now, you know, as I wrote, in fairness, uh, uh, Tavis, not as much on, on his PBS show, but on his radio show with Cornell West, the two of them have been very, very critical, highly critical yes, yes. Of, of President Obama. So, so, so these folks are not towing the Democrat Party line when it comes to Obama. But I think that, and, and in particular, when it comes to economic issues, when it comes to how, you know, how the black community are faring under this president. But I, I, I would like to think, I would imagine that this is the biggest audience, the biggest national audience he's ever made this comment to. Because, I mean, obviously, on his PBS show, he's not getting the, the one and a half to two million. No, viewers. and like you said, he's not talking about that either on that show. It's on, And the radio no. show, I don't even know where it airs. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I don't know how much he talks about it on, on his uh, show on PBS. I have a hard time believing that they allow him right. to speak much negatively about Obama. No, it's usually an interview, book interview, uh, you know, an entertainment interview, that kind of thing. Yeah, I was I was very surprised, but again, but actually not that surprised because I've seen him I've I've heard him say this type of stuff on his radio show, so I I think it was really good of Hannity to ask that question. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. Now this is very interesting. Paul Krugman, the guy with the the eyes that you know, he's it's it's you almost think he's on the lookout for a hit. He's like his eyes just never stop moving back and forth, back and forth. That must mean something psychologically. I don't know what. Uh, but you did a piece, <laughs> you did a piece on Newsbusters uh, uh, that uh, from Morning Joe, uh, which revealed uh, the former New York Times editor uh, who was on uh, uh, with with Morning Joe talking about um, how they dreaded. Editing the inaccuracies of, uh, of Paul Krugman. Let's listen to Cut 39. Well, he seems to edit that blog in the New York Times, and it's time that somebody called him out. People are afraid of him. Yeah, I'm I, I, I actually won't <laughs> tell you which public editor it was, but one of the public editors of the New York Times uh, told me off the record after my debate that their biggest nightmare was his column every week. <laughs> well, and what was interesting is, unfortunately, they were, they were going to commercial. So, so he didn't get an opportunity, meaning Scarborough didn't get an opportunity to, com to complete his thought or to elaborate. So I quickly sent him an email, and he, and he, and he emailed me back. And he, he said that you know, this had occurred some years ago talking to a, 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 you know, an as-yet unknown uh, uh, or undisclosed public editor at the Times. And, and, and he said uh, – what did he say? He basically said that um, – oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I've lost it. He basically said that, 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 that most of their workload – was, was fact-checking uh, Krugman, right? Yeah, the, the, the inaccuracies and the misstatements. And it, it's, it's not I, – I frankly – and I emailed and I emailed Joe back. He did not respond. I know he didn't want to go on the record about this. Right. But I would imagine that it was probably Daniel Okren. If you remember, he was, he was I believe, the first of the, of the New York Times public editors. He left in either 2004 or 2005. And in his last column, he was kind of doing a, 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 a you know a, a house cleaning, so to speak. And in his final column, he mentioned that uh, uh, basically that that Krugman likes to play fast and loose with the facts concerning the economy to fit his agenda. And uh, you know we know that. I mean, I'm I'm not sure you're aware. I think we may have spoken about this. There's actually a group on the internet called the Paul Krugman Truth Squad. <laughs> and every time he writes a column, they're debunking it. And they're debunking it using it using actual economic data released from government websites. I mean, this 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 man is he's really an abomination as an economist, and it's really quite sad that I mean, would you agree 
that he is probably the most celebrated economist. Oh my gosh! In the in the liberal media, absolutely, they love having him on. I, he first of all, he's tough to watch on TV because of the eyes and because of the personality. He doesn't he, he doesn't say anything, you know. Not, he has no excitement or personality or, or, or right. you know, or, or any kind of uh, exciting presentation. And like you right. said, uh, you know, and what the New York Times editor told Joe, a lot of times uh, probably a lot of uh, factual uh, errors in what he's yeah. saying. So yeah. I don't get that yeah. at all. But listen, I got to tell you, uh, I was speaking to Ann Coulter today. That was this morning, <laughs> actually. Wait, I'm not finished. And um, I, I was uh, emailing with Joe Scarborough. Uh, who else? Come on, give me another name. Oh, well. I'll, no, I, well, I finished my day talking to Steve Malmberg. Ah, oh, well, there you go. So you're going to, oh, but you see your day's over, so no one's going to be told that. No, 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 no. It's going to be all over Twitter. Oh, right okay, now. okay, well, great. And then you know who'll see it? Oh, no, they don't follow you. But uh, yeah. all those uh, left-wing journalism students, or I like that, right. J students, J students. J students. Yeah, that's yes. cool, that's cool. Hey, have a great weekend, my friend. I appreciate it as always. You too, sir. All right, take care. Noel Shepard, ladies and gentlemen, associate editor at newsbusters.org. Great, great segment. I love talking to him and so much great stuff out there and, and, and to point out and to talk about. Um, we have one final segment coming up here on the uh, Friday edition of the Steve Ballsberg Show. If you would like to weigh in, if you would like to give me your opinion, if you would like to give me your take, I would love to hear it uh, at 855 777 9660 855 Triple seven nine. I don't know what that is. Triple seven nine six six zero. Right here on the Steve Ballsberg Show. News. Uh, news. I'm saying Newsbusters. Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve Ballsberg Show. Hi, this is Dick Morris. Obamacare is taking full effect this year with over fifteen thousand pages of regulations. You need to know how this law affects you. That's why you should get your copy of Obamacare Survival Guide. It's easy to read and the best guide to the new law. Even if you're currently insured or a senior on Medicare or a business owner, a medical profession, or really any citizen, you need the Obamacare Survival Guide. In it, you'll find about hidden taxes, fees, and fines, including a 40% tax on some health plans. I warned you about Obamacare. It's rationing Medicare cuts and will trigger doctor shortages. Now the Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the simple steps to protect your family. Get the Obamacare Survival Guide at bookstores everywhere. It's already an Amazon bestseller. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 today. Go to Obamacare311.com. Obamacare311.com. That's Obamacare311.com. Larry works on the construction site. When he's not held up with constipation, Mary sits all day at a desk which does little to relieve gas and bloating. You can't schedule abdominal discomfort, but you can help alleviate it with Bactopro. Developed by holistic medical doctor David Brownstein, Bactopro is the fiber probiotic supplement that comes in the form of an easy-to-eat, tasty wafer. It includes the most essential ingredients necessary to help support your healthy digestive and immune function. Experience the results. Learn how you can receive a 30-day supply of Bactopro. Just visit bactopro.com slash offer. All you cover is a $4.95 shipping fee. Act now, and you'll also be given instant access to our downloadable special report, A Doctor's Guide to Probiotics and Your Health. Do something about your digestive health now. Get your 30-day supply at bactopro.com slash offer. That's B-A-C-T-I-P-R-O dot com slash offer. Limited time only. Bactopro.com slash offer. If you're a man over 40, your prostate could be forcing you to urinate frequently, even disrupting your sleep multiple times each night. You're not alone. Over half of men over 40 experience age-related prostate concerns. Fortunately, prominent medical doctor David Brownstein believes that aging prostate concerns are not inevitable. That's why Dr. Brownstein developed Prostate Revive, an advanced dietary supplement containing a unique blend of 15 ingredients designed to promote optimal prostate health. So men, as part of this new radio promotion, you now have the opportunity to claim your own 30-day supply of Prostate Revive, containing Sol Palmetto, Beta Cytosterol, and numerous other prostate helpers. Just cover a $4.95 shipping and handling charge. Plus, if you act now, you'll also get a doctor's guide to a healthy prostate as a bonus gift. Please visit ProstateRevive.com slash radio for details on getting your 30-day supply of Prostate Revive and free report. That's ProstateRevive.com slash radio. Do something about those annoying age-related prostate concerns. Visit ProstateRevive.com slash radio now while supplies last.
A hot new book by Craig Smith argues that the greenback is now at high risk. Thanks to our spendthrift politicians, Mark Twain said the truth is stranger than fiction. The same is true of the Great Debasement, which began a century ago with the creation of the Federal Reserve and income tax. The result, today's dollar retains just two cents of its original buying power. Yes, progressive politicians have engineered the largest wealth confiscation in history, creating in essence a fourth branch of government. Learn what must be done to preserve your money if the dollar crashes. The good news is Swiss America is offering The Great Debasement a $20 value free of charge for this special radio offer. 800-818-3967. 800-818-3967. 800-818-3967. Call Swiss America now for a free DVD. 800-818-3967. Hi, this is Mike Reagan. You need to watch out because thousands of new Obamacare rules are currently being implemented and few know what the law says or does. Listen to what Senator Max Baucus, one of the authors of the Obamacare law, recently said. I tell you, I just see a huge train wreck coming down and I don't see any results yet. I just see a huge train wreck. He's right. So protect yourself from this train wreck. Get the number one bestseller, The Obamacare Survival Guide. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law. Join more than a half a million Americans who have their copy. Get the number one bestseller, The Obamacare Survival Guide, at bookstores everywhere. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 off the cover price by going now to Obamacare311.com. Obamacare311.com. That's Obamacare311.com. Phones hot. Satellite link established. Studio lights illuminated. Cameras rolling. Video encoders firing ones and zeros. Internet stream. Um, is streaming. The most technology advanced radio show is on the air. Here's the captain of this enterprise, Steve Malsberg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear this. Uh, there's some liberal reporter, sports reporter uh, in Detroit, asking Jim Leyland. Uh, uh, if, if, if and one of his players, if they feel guilty about being wealthy and working and living in Detroit, you got to hear this. Cut seven. I think we have it. You and your coaches and your players have nice jobs and make a nice living in a city where a lot of people are out of work, a lot of people are struggling, where the city itself has declared bankruptcy. You guys ever consider uh, consider at all just just either how how fortunate you guys are compared to everybody else in the city, and do you ever feel guilty about it? Well, I never feel guilty because I think this organization does a lot of wonderful things for the city. We we try to have all kind of interaction with the cities and all kind of programs to try to peop, uh, help people out. I think the Detroit Tigers have done an un outstanding job at that. Uh, I think if you've ever watched my interviews, when I start balling, I get very sensitive to that. I'm not going to ball today, by the way, but uh, I think that uh, we are very sensitive to that. Uh, we really are. Uh, I know how hard those people work, and, and it, it's a tough thing. Um, but I don't think that there's anything we should feel guilty about. I think it's something that we should feel proud about. And let me say to Jim Leyland, bravo, congratulations, good luck against the Red Sox in the ALCS. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody, and uh, thanks for being with me this week. It's going to be uh, another big week next week. God willing, we'll all reconvene on Monday right here on the Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.